recording. Also on, on the other side, if anyone wants to get a backup recording in case this fails, just please go ahead. Um, all right, so yesterday we started uh, on the walls. So that was good. We actually got the pro proved out the concept of the DIY kind of structural insulated panel. So at the end of the day, we, we took two panels, put them on a on a sill plate, and it worked really well. Like the way it looks right now is we can expect like five minutes per per panel. So if you got the finished panels, we can expect like five five minutes. I mean, it was easy. You put Put the thing on a rail, kind of put them together, screw them together, self-align, because they have both the top and bottom alignment. And uh, that's, that's working really well. Let's go to the videotape. Let's, let's take a look at some of the... Roll that I don't know if uh, anybody has seen it, but... Uh, no, this is... So in the background, I'll just play the... This? Yeah. So can you sign into the Zoom? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Are you in the Zoom? I was there. So yeah, so go back there so people can see uh, in the room what I'm, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, but you're just sharing this. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Let me share my screen. So I'll, I'll share my screen. Um, um, Is that a no, I thought it was him. Hold on just a second. I pinned yours, so that's full school. Let's see, I'm sharing my screen. Can you do my sh screen share? Because I'm actually trying to share a screen. Look at your screen. You're doing that thing where it keeps getting the the refractal. Okay, hold on a sec. Um, okay. Do we have it? Hold on. Okay, that that's a little better. Looks like. Okay, just just playing a few things in the background. So um, at minute one twenty four here. Uh, just to review, I mean, so here we've got, we're in a workshop. Uh, this is actually B-roll, I've got the other cameras. But here, take a look at this. So yeah, put up, putting up the first panel. Um, you see we just shifted it over, shifts right over on the rail. The rail being the, the bottom plate. Next one over. Um, we put a little block there because they weren't aligned at the middle. They're constrained to the top and bottom. The, the middle was like three quarters off. But with this, okay, take them right back down because it's raining, and we can do we can do that uh, very quickly and effectively. So that's really good. I'm just going to do some more uh, background as I speak here. Um, but what what does that mean? So if it's five minutes times 24 modules for the bottom, it's 120 minutes. So if we've got all the modules built, two hours. If we have four teams working, one at each corner, it's 30 minutes. That's good. So uh, I think I think that'll be really cool. Um, what I wanted to maybe bring up as far as design or like understanding how you build this, it's like on one side there's a lot of details that when you're building it out there you got to worry about a lot of different things. You're actually putting things together mechanically. You're thinking so. Altogether, there's all this information you have to keep in mind, but how do we make that process simpler, possibly? How do we... Um, I, I think the goal would be you know the house has this particular shape, it's made of 4x8 modules and they overlap in a certain way. 
what are all the critical information pieces you need to know to understand it in a conceptual way that you could just go out there without any notes actually understand it I think that would be the goal um, to make it simple so what are the critical things that we need to know and as we go out so right now we have a few of the basic modules built we don't have the windows we have one or two corners I think the key is can we understand it conceptually enough that okay we know there's one basic pattern and we make little modification on an, on it so the one concept I want to bring out is like constraint based build which is how do you let the material tell you what to do next let's look at that with that let's keep that in mind because we know we have some very basics there's only a few things we need to know we need to know four feet we need to know nine feet we need to know the OSB is four by ten and by the way um, so what I would actually in terms of if anyone's got notes and paper take notes like Christian because because what happens the way this learning process works in my view it's like it's repetition you got to keep keep going over it our memory is very limited I would say it's there's too many pieces of information flowing floating about until we conceptually embody all this information so uh, I would definitely encourage taking notes 4 by 10 there's 4 by 9 for the frame 4 by 10 for the sheeting we have to know the little offsets like we know we're hanging down one inch from the bottom of the frame with the OSB. Do you know the best place in your house to potentially save money? Not the garage, not the kitchen, but here, the roof. If your roof doesn't have solar panels on it. Hey everybody, Mike here. Thanks for... Okay. Um, what are the critical pieces? So, I'm going to go get into that. Minimum set, set of pieces that we know the corners are different, but how are they different? What are those critical measurements that we can actually conceptually understand and, and even if I weren't there or no guidance was there, just getting to the bottom of all the, all the little pieces of information. So um, this is uh, lesson 26. So let's get into this doc, which I will put into the chat box right now. So I'm gonna uh, take that into the chat box. Anybody who wants to take a look at that. So first of all, there's a, we actually broke down the first floor into all the 24 modules. So you can actually, if you go here, this is what we have. And to start with the concept, I mean, what all do we have there? Front and back, left and right, they're all kind of labeled. There's the brakes we talked about, brakes being adjustment panels. We're trying to keep them all the time as next to last. The next to last panel is an adjustment. Um, so for example, in the f first row, 1F8 is the adjustment. And what is the adjustment? It's a one and a half inch gap that we're leaving ourselves in case that we're, we're not accurate and the wall doesn't fit within 32 by 16 feet. Adjustment before why is the adjustment there not the last because that is a one R3 is actually a door and we wanted to keep the door as simple as possible um, you've got the adjustment at 1B7 which is next to last uh, so the adjustment is actually it's there but you know good question is okay is it on 7 or 8 actually and and I think we actually put it into 8 and we'll, we'll go through that later because uh, that would allow 1B7 to be actually identical to the standard module so we does that make sense we we wanted to leave the door alone because it's complex but here it's since it's a corner we actually did shrink it so we put the adjustment and the corner feature into into 8 here we put the adjustment into as well I, I think that's true we'll, we'll go into the details what why why in some corners and not in others they're all they're all in the next to last corner so here there's there's <coughs> one one per wall yeah yeah not here because that's that one there is a door so we wanted to keep the door 
because it's complex enough already, we want to keep that adjustment part mm-hmm. out of that. Yeah, keep it, keep the door, because the doors and windows and a hidden door, they all share a same design pattern. So if we change that pattern, we would have this completely unique thing that doesn't follow, the windows are there, there's a hidden door back there, there's second story um, doors and windows. And there's a very basic pattern that applies to windows and doors, which I'll show, which I think will explain why we wanted to keep it the same. And to be specific about that. But it's not in your corner. It's in your one beside the corner on the on your yeah. left-hand side. Yeah. It's, that's, that's right. Because we wanted to uh, not change the... Inventions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's this all. This is all up for question. I mean, it, it's true. Like, okay, so why don't we, for example, well, I'm sorry about that. One so R two. The, the customization is the, for your corners, which gives you the ability to make it wider or shorter, is in the bottom left hand corner, not realized. My suggestion would be to bring that corner up and to actually bottom left. Bottom left. Bottom left. So one F two, one F one. All right. Here, you're given a lot of uh, liberty because of your double door frame, as well as this corner that has that kind of necessary property to yep. adjust it. This one, you don't have that luxury, right? These are gonna, these should have been standard with a wall module or with a corner module that gives you the ability to flex that. My suggestion. No, no, hold on. The one L two. That's a corner too. So. Anything that's one of the two corner things, they have special provisions for making that a corner. They're never going to be like one of the so standard one F1 modules. standard? No, uh, all the corners are non-standard. All the corners are specialized corner modules. So the this only should be brought into here, or this should be switch bent in order yeah. to com- compete. Yeah, yeah, I think that maybe we can we can come back to this. Okay, yeah. Which not not to, not to switch down, just to. Maybe we've got a process we're going through about this thing. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is these plates, that's not natural. It's not... It, it ain't natural. It, <laughs> it, it, it's not a natural building process and it does worry me. But we can make it work where we can... Doors, corners, and windows are our only places where we'll be able to adjust for that. So, yeah, that's... Well, the, we can question whether we can... We want to adjust at the... Like for example here, that will be at the door. Um, I want to see so one R three specifically. One R three is the door. Um, yeah, that du- that double French door is going to give you a lot of liberty in space. Yeah, so that that's a door. This is a double door, uh, and we chose to. We were saying, let's make all the adjustments next to last. Okay, let's let's uh, let's save that until we see the actual simple design rationale for how how these things are are designed. So, um, so the idea is, if we have, we know four by eight, and then we know the ten. Like, how do we derive? Okay, so say we have to derive the corner, and then we have to derive. Okay, well, where are you going to put the gap? What's, what's the most sensible place? Or how do you derive a window? Okay, so we start with basics. So basics. Uh, so everyone's on the same page. First of all, you can download all the CAD pieces on there, and we're not saying that this is going to be the final. Maybe, maybe like what we find out, like maybe Anthony is saying, yeah, that we might want to go with that. So convention. So so build like you read. We're going from left to right. So when we're out on a wall, we start on the left and go to the right, and that also means that. There's a male part of the module on the right-hand side, the female part on the left-hand side. What's that mean? Like, if you're looking from the outside, the male part, part that sticks out a little bit, is on the right-hand side, and the left-hand side here is inset a little bit. So you've got panels actually uh, sliding together. Front, back, left, and right sides. There are different sides of the house itself, I, I should say, of house. Now, by the way, you can edit this doc, uh, so f- feel free. 
So we're describing things as looking from outside of the house. Okay. Orientation question. Yeah. So what is the front side of our house? Front side would be the front door, the double door. Yes, but from the in, south. on the pad, what's the, like when we walk out of the shop, what side are we looking at? Like, I just, uh, so information. north is that way. So yeah. we're looking at, we're looking at the house from the north so that's and that's the front. Okay. Okay. Meaning that, yeah, okay. No, we're looking at the house faces. The house faces south. House faces south. Oh. So we're looking at the house to the north. Um, okay. So let's let's go through. Question. Yes. Um, would there be value in describing things as if looking at it from inside the house because that's how you build it, or not? Uh, well, we actually start building it. We, we could do either. Okay. So is there a case for describing it from the outside? Uh, well, what, what is, I would say... On the field? Hmm? I would just go with whatever's normal in the construction field to adhere to like, principles that everybody could understand, which I believe is where you're describing it, looking from the outside. Okay. So, yeah, it's probably more intuitive because the inside doesn't have this sheeting on it. It's more looks more complicated, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, we could choose either. I think it's simpler to go looking at it from the outside yeah, because um, before, it would be too much effort to, to switch those things up. You got references, so yeah, just, just how, it, how it is and we'll Yeah, and that's that's another consideration. If, if we've been doing it, there's inertia there, so mm -hmm. we'd have to like reverse it. Oh, yeah. No, no. So, yeah. Um, okay. So bottom offset mm -hmm. on OSB, what we do is just little cut tabs. It's one inch. So, the, oh, well, not talking about the tabs yet, just talking about the sheet of OSB. It's one inch below. Okay, so talking about tolerances. What happens if it can be smaller? And what would happen then? So ju just understanding the logic, why is it one inch? What if it were 1.5 inches? So the questions are, so you can understand this, can it be smaller, can it be larger? And what are the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of that? Because we chose one inch. Nothing said we're going to have to have to be one inch, but how do we choose it is the question. How do we choose it? Well, it can't be larger than one and a half inches because that's how thick the silk is, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So no more than 1.5, but it, um, what about small for the small? Alignment issues. Um, also water runoff. Yeah. So what is the minimum we think we could make it? I would still we need to work. Then, like, what we're using the top half. The, the the gap at the top that yeah the that top ends up being like after everything is said and done if you have one one aspect here is when everything is said and done if you have one inch overhang at the bottom turns out on a second floor how everything adds up the overhang is exactly two so that's very convenient like if we said say well what if we said we're going to make it 1.25 uh, cool but it's not as easy to remember as one 1.25 would work but um, compared to one, one is easier. So that's really like the only constraint. With 1.25, you're also getting into some issues like getting pretty close. Like if you have a foundation pad that like we have right now, which would not, I don't think it would be like that in real life because everywhere you want to have a pad that does not, that goes straight down from your wall. You don't have like a ledge where water could collect. But in this case we do. So if you get close to like 1.25, if there's irregularities there, you're getting, with everything said and done, all the irregularities, you might get places where the 1.25 inches ends up hitting the floor, and therefore you're, uh, you might mess things up. So one is very safe. It's half an inch away from the floor. It's enough to cover over the, the bottom plate, which, which means for water runoff. And it also happens to be that you end up exactly two inches on an overhang of the OSB for the second story modules, the way things work out. So there's several reasons why that, why that's there. Okay, but let's keep going. Um, now, what happens if you make one, uh, this overhang on one panel one inch, and the next panel it's 1.25 inches? What would that do? What for would that the, introduce? For just the little pieces that are, are holding it. No, just uh, the, we're talking still about the front OSB. Okay. What does that do? Well, 
it's a finishing detail it's like that line at, at the top it will be uneven you've got one indent for one of the panels so it's like finishing stuff that you need to take care of so you want to keep it regular the thing is you want to keep it regular but if you decided to like for some reason you, you could only do 1.25 or you, say you made made an error and you already built four panels with 1.25 or something just keep it uh, I guess and uh, you'll you'll then have two and a quarter overhang on a top floor you could change that but yeah the question is like understanding what matters and what doesn't so side offset is three quarter inch everywhere it's three quarter inch so how do we get three quarter inch how do we come up with that and can it be more or less half of the yeah half of a half of a two by what happens if it's smaller what happens so let's yeah if it's smaller and the next one over is three quarters then you won't be able to put them together because mm -hmm. it will hit against if it's smaller what if it's larger well if it's larger then yes it would fit into the next module but the one on the other side would not be able to fit to it. so you have to be close to that three quarter and we're allowing for that mess up like say two panels maybe have a little gap and you don't want to fix it say you get a quarter inch gap well you can keep building up over up to 1.5 in accuracy before you actually like it wouldn't the wall wouldn't fit in a 16 by 32 um, so 1 eighth inch times eight eight panels or seven seams um, 1 eighth that's like 1 inch 1 eighth so we're definitely allowed like 1 eighth off uh, if it's a quarter, quarter times seven is one and three quarter. So it'll be like if we were wrong by a quarter everywhere, we'd end up the house would be like a quarter over 32 feet. So kind of think about it. Okay, next. Um, so now the blocking pieces. They create a rail, and we saw that in the video. Um, so in real life. Yeah, sudden so real life works great. Um, let's see, I'm just checking if we're recording, okay, good, it works well. Four bro blocking pieces create a rail, um, okay, should we have five, should we have three? What is, okay, so why, uh, okay, what would happen if we had three? Isn't that three? You got your back and your two fronts? No. One, two, two three, four. Oh, okay. One what happens if we had three, for example? Somebody can get in the rail. Uh, yeah, you'll miss, you can't you can be off the rail in one corner. Uh, okay. Can we standardize the blocking on the on front? Like put the fifth one on front so you can... Uh, the amount of blocks is just how robust you run. You can't down. reach it if you're on a second floor. You'd have to be on scaffolding there. Uh, if you, the house is designed to be buildable without scaffolding. So you can t take the panel on the second floor and tilt it up. If you have blocking on the other side, there's no way you can reach it. You cannot, you'd have to have somebody else on a ladder on the outside. Uh, but you can put a piece of blocking on the inside. So does it make sense to put one, say, there mm -hmm. or there? Well, okay, does it make sense to put. Let's let's take a look at location where my pointer is. Does it make any sense to put one there? Absolutely. Um, but you already have two corners, right? You're, well, you, yeah, it's just building a more robust little safety system uh -huh. if needed. Uh, but what, if you have it here, it's see it's inset. Would it do anything? If it's inset, does it do anything if you? Yeah. You will have to do it, on the other it, it would keep the house from coming, or the panel, well, in my head, it would keep the panel from coming inward. Hmm. And then there would be something um, pseudo substantial on the outside that would keep it from going the other way as well. Um. Because the, the, it, set, it sets out from the, 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 the wood. This yeah. isn't sitting on the wood, this is sitting outside of the wood. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the actual frame that is the, the true. Um, building these little blocks, they're they're all temporary, so they can really do anything you want them to. Yeah, 
But if you, you know, so take specifically this one that's inside. Now these are actually jutting out. Mm -hmm. That's the female side. That's the male side of the panel. Uh, so if you put one in the middle, what, what is it doing? Nothing. nothing. Huh. It's not doing anything there. You've got one there. It's not going to touch the next panel. The one that would do something is would be the one that was on that side, mm -hmm. right? So if we were to put in five blocks, right? So it would make sense to put one in here to do exactly what we saw in the video. We saw in the video that we had to actually punch punch the two blocks in at the middle. So if you had one here, what would it do? It would make it would constrain the middle. We should probably do it. That means that uh, each of these blocks is a friction point, so you have a little more friction. Uh, but I think it would make sense to put one there to, to address that issue that we never have to now put in a block like we did it from the outside staying on the first floor. You right. can't do that on the second floor. So I would say we actually go to five. Um, and that's a learning from practice. Like you, you could never kind of tell it from design point unless you've had experience. But yesterday just doing it, we saw that the middle was off by a half an inch, which we addressed by putting a block on the outside to suck it in. So if you had a block here, you're constrained to align perfectly in the middle. So let's add one. Which direction was it bowing? Like what, what was it outwards? Uh, I actually would out, like so to, two panels like this. <laughs> yeah. Like that. I think it was because okay. the block because you're not constrained in the middle. Okay. So the panels so the tops were perfectly together, aligned, yeah. bottom was perfectly was aligned. Answer, like, but the panels were bowed or like somehow in the middle, yeah. Yeah. Huh? I mean, wood is going to bow yeah. all kinds of ways. So they were the panel was like this. Yeah. One or the other. It was curved by half an inch. And you can't can't really see that. And these blocking right. pieces, they are for alignment rather than support, right? They're fully for alignment and they're going to be taken off later. Right. So the, 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 the fifth piece lets you see the offset and then yep. fasten it in between them and then you're good, right? It constrains you because you're actually going into it so it will constrain you to make it right yeah, yeah. at the middle. Okay. So that's a learning from yesterday. Martin. So. Question. Yeah. So we've got right now the tabs are like a projection. They're aligned with the panel. If we offset the tabs, um, to the left so if you move every tab on there over by an inch and a half when you walk up with your panel you could set the butt of it in next to your Jason panel on say the left side you as, as we're viewing it and then we set it up that allows the panel slips past the other panel that's sticking out so the outside panels are in alignment and then the tabs on the left side would hit the stud on the left keeping you from like over like pushing it over so you could just like put in the butt, lift it up and align it and everything slots in place. Because yesterday when we put it in, we had to put it on the rail and yeah. pound it over, right? And this would allow you to like set it in, lift it up and make some minor adjustments. Are, am I describing this well? Does anyone else follow that? You want to, no, who who okay. followed it and who can explain it to me? <laughs> I didn't follow it. Uh, because in each, in any case, what we ended up doing, like we ended up tilting one and then kind of sliding it back in, so it would go in between the. Right. So you could do it from either direction. Right Not now, sure if there's a right now difference. You get, like the, it's making a, a U, and then you have to like set it on and then slide it all in, right? You can't just set it on so that when you tilt it up, the panels are in perfect alignment, right? You have to set it on so that the panels are not touching, yep. so that the tabs. I see. Past each other, and then you just bump it in. Yeah. Well, if you have the tabs all moved over half an inch, if you could. Okay, so could, where? What do you want to do? Like go two nails. So instead of so so instead of hanging off on that end, why can't you hang everything off? All the tabs hang off the same amount on this end. That way, say there's a panel already here. But the thing is, how can you stand up the first panel? Right. Like it would, like you would need two panels, and then the the third one in the middle, that would m make it all fit. But if you want to do one by one, it's no. gonna. Um, I don't think. I don't know those that tabs are a problem. We didn't cut them exact, and the issue with that gapping was a tab pushing against another tab that was not natural wood bend. Yes, then before you we drill that any So um Logan, does this explain? This is what we're doing. What? Um, Female male connector. <laughs> this is an exaggeration of what our panel looks like from the top. 
Do you have a dimension for your for your blocks? Yeah. Four by six. No, size does not too critical. We just said nominally four by six, but we found a bucket of these other blocks which we just used. Okay. But that does <laughs> size doesn't matter. It's really just how you use them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the controversy? You know, it's good if you take that bottom line, that lower line, and you just drag it over to make a Z shape. You know how things are staggered. I'm just. Oh, Z instead of... Uh, Go into Z, a Z instead of Z, uh, a Z, Z, Z instead of basically... Yeah, but then aren't you missing a constraint? If you do this, aren't you missing a constraint? How no, are you no, going to... Drag that, drag that other right. corner out to the right now. So you just... So this is still here? No, 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 make an inverted on the other side. side. So this dock is editable. Can somebody help? <laughs> yes. So this is, this is what we're doing right now. Right. Just put that on the other side. No, you do it. It's editable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find <laughs> eight, seven, six. Okay, that's why I'm missing it. So, copy. Um, well, I, I drew it the, the other way around, so. So, that's supposed to be the top down. It's actually, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this this is uh, the way it's in this panel here is like this, exaggerated. I mean, this is what's going on here. Oh, I'm trying to turn off. You you and your block that land. Your Man, the panel is going crazy, going crazy right, right now. The first floor and second floor. That's what the purpose of them, right? Oh, really Say it again. Your block pieces. Yep. That's the land. Your, your panels. Yes. Your Upstairs and downstairs. Not upstairs and downstairs. It's next to each other on the same level. Yeah, that I see that part. But I'm saying when you go to put this, put the panel, your wall panel on the second floor. Yeah. It's also going to use the same blocks to sort of line it up with the with the first floor, right? We're going to put a a sill plate on the second floor mm -hmm. in order to provide for that automated alignment, and then you put which we did blocks. not do before. We d we never had that. But it's an extra part that gains perfect alignment. Okay. So will you have also on that sole plate, you'll have blocks on that? Yep. We'll have the same system up on the second floor. Exactly. Then you actually could make one block to encompass both of them. Except you've got a floor in between. you got a Our joist on the floor. floor. So... Okay, so what do we got? Do that? Yeah. So, it's so like where's the constraint on the on this direct? So you're constraining for this. How is that constraint for that? It doesn't. Mm. It constrains only in one direction. So in other words, if you're going to push against, so what you have here mm. is you've got this. If there's like a bump there, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen in this case all the time because no wood is perfect. Okay. So I exaggerated it. it. It might be close here, but you'll have these little irregularities which are absolutely eliminated by how tight your blocks are here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But, it, but there, your, the assumption is there's another one like it right beside it holding it in in the same way that the last one's right. holding they, it in. They, they, you know what I mean? They tessellate. Yeah. Well, so you mean you've got this? Them over and over, the, uh, the second one is providing that function you wanted. Yes. A pushback. And that way you can just sort of, you can just tilt that left one in from the inside. Yeah. Tilt it up, screw it in, tilt the next I one. I see what you're saying. It supports the next. Does that, uh, does that well drive or am I missing? I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just but what no, I, that, that may do it because okay. now, so what? what's next? Next, um... Next is this, which is, I'm going to draw that here. So now you got screws, sorry. So this is an exaggerated screw there. Yes, that screw would pinch it in. So, um, but if the warp is pretty bad, like sometimes the screws will not pinch it in. So it's a possible failure point. Okay, where Typically is, it is will work. Is that screw going through the tab? 
uh, screw is going through the tab. You have nothing else. On the second floor, you don't have access to the outside to right. screw in the long tab. Here, you'd have to have this tab pretty much the whole way down mm. to get a better chance of uh, pinching it together. In some cases of really bad warpage, simple screws do not work. You'd have to use larger screws like lag bolts, mm -hmm. which was that's what we were fighting the whole time in the last build. Uh, things wouldn't go in, so even with a pinch of the screw, it wouldn't align it, so we had to use la big lag bolts to actually get things to line up. Okay. Yeah. That issue would exist with both tab types? Not as long as you can get it in between the tabs. The, the difficult part is getting it in the tabs. Once you're in between the tabs, that's called alignment. Yeah. If you have the a hard part will be if they're badly bent, they're not going to have an easy time going in. So that's the part to overcome. Uh, maybe in practice we find that some, some things are just like that, really hard. But that can, so the reason for, okay, so take a look at, let's go back to the fifth block and why we started with four. If you have four, you know you have a defined sill plate, yes, you can definitely get it on there. At the top, you know that you can go in like in or out to get them to go in perfectly. So if the panel is badly warped, so say the case of a badly warped panel, the middle is not going to go in if you had a tab there. Mm -hmm. So in a case like that, which is possible, we might say, okay, remove that fifth tab and we're going to put a big block of two by right. and suck it in. So that's what might happen. Pipe clamp. Uh, you cannot get a pipe clamp across a four foot span unless you have a very large pipe clamp. Because you're you're going a four foot span, you're just trying to bring two pieces of wood in the room, right? Except the uh, you know, the, the C of it is four feet long. You're pinching in here, you have to go above the top to pinch it in at the middle. Yeah, I think you're talking about I don't know if pipe clamps like that. Oh, in the outward and inward direction, aligning that. The easiest thing is a block, which sucks it in. So you see, like, if you attach the block yeah, to yeah. one, yeah. then when you screw it in, each screw has 300 pounds of force for a regular type of a uh, one-eighth inch screw, like three inch long. Uh, bigger screws will have a little more, so... But bringing it in alignment, is that just human pushing into where the block can be broken? You cannot do that if you're on the second floor, because there's no human on the other side. Um, you can block it from the inside, right? You can block it from the inside without a problem. It's equivalent to blocking it from the outside. So either outside or inside, and that works. So this is cool. Um, so save this your would best be for the second floor. Yeah. If we're doing 3D printing, and we have more tightness, more control mm -hmm. over dimensionality, this might be a good idea. Um, however, in this one, there's a thing that you have to constrain two di dimensions at the same time. Do you see that? Yep. Okay. So you need to constrain this dimension as you are constraining this dimension. Because you can get it perfectly aligned, but it might not be pinched in all the way. Or you can pinch it in all the way first and it may be a little misaligned. Those two constraints are fighting each other. Oh, you have yeah. to do one at a time. Um, so this system here, I think, does that because once you get it into the slot, you're pulling it in one direction and it's perfectly aligned. So you're constraining it along yeah. one yeah. direction. So that's the logic of it. Uh, so yes, this is an issue, this, this dual direction of constraining is an issue. Okay, moving on. Any, uh, any other things to wrap that discussion up? Uh, do we call it blocking pieces? That's yeah. Is that the tabs? Tabs, yeah. Should we tabs. change it so we just call it tabs or should we keep it to blocking pieces? I thought yeah, we could. Like so tab? Tab. Change it.
Temtabs. Temtabs. Change it back side of the boat. They do not belong to the final building. Yeah. Uh, feel free to change this dock uh, without permission. <laughs> You're already permitted. Um, so next, blocking offset three quarter. We we discussed this. So the tolerance on the block. Oh yeah, no, we did not discuss this. How far off can the blocks be? Because there's a different tolerance for the male or female block. So let's take a look at this block here. What is its tolerance? Can it be smaller than three quarter? No, because you'll interfere with that block on the other side. Can it be larger? Yes. Yeah, by a quarter of an inch about. You still want to be able to screw into that vertical, which is one and a half inches. So there's a tolerance of like a quarter inch over three quarter but not under. How about this one? What's can it be shorter or longer? Well if it's longer you'd, you'd possibly run into the next one over. If it's shorter it would work as long as you have enough to grab on. Like it could be like half inch. As long as it's got enough meat to grab onto the next next panel. Uh, maybe even a quarter if it's really nice and tight even like if you have a quarter inch to grab and it constrains yeah it could possibly still work uh, yeah so, so in that sense the female is not doing much right what is the female doing exactly like if, if what is this doing exactly no that's the male right yeah. we're calling it the that's the male end of the frame into the frame okay okay so yeah so yeah, the female then. No, well, the no, female the part of the frame. the frame. The male into the frame. What is it doing exactly when it's just, uh, it's basically just a, a place when, like a stop end, right? It's alignment. It's, it's this alignment, it's lateral alignment like that. The rest, as far as going this, mm -hmm. that screws. Then you screw it in and it pinches in tight. Yeah. Yeah. But like, so the m it goes the female into the frame, right? On the other side, and it just I don't know what to do. So, like the blocking comes here, and it stops right here, right? And You're saying the blocking is a stop? Yes, yeah, a stop, right? Yeah, it can be. If it's three quarter inches, it's not really a stop. It just lines up there. It's mm -hmm. maybe touching to the next one. So what's the what's the use of it? In a sense? If it's not even using it, does it stop? Uh, so the top. The, the top only top use of it is the top. Oh, six out of the top. Yeah, 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 you're right. So you've got uh -huh. the top yeah. alignment. Yeah. So there. Yeah, it's got, it's got But it's not doing anything for the, yeah, for the, the lateral alignment at that point, yeah. So it's for the top. Yeah, so this one. Ah, so there's an interesting point that the male side blocking is used only for top alignment. In other words, you can you can mm -hmm. go even further. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. in other words, when you understand that, you'll be like, oh, okay, done. Like it's off, but I, I know that still works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here, this one always has two functions for the top plate and to constrain the ladder. Okay. Good. So we can say. Um, Note, male side blocking functions only with top plate. Okay. I think you could pretty easily make a 3D printed jig too for the corner, just to like set it on and then you could just slap the tab in place. The intelligence is not to be that tight anyway, but... It's a cost thing, right? Yeah. Why do you want to free print with a regular filament? Yeah, I mean it doesn't have to be a huge print though, right? It just needs to be attached to the corner and then just have a gap for the camera fit. Probably over in here, but you're doing a lot of them. I don't know how that that corner piece would look, because you got the OSB on the front. So you go from the do like a snap in thing from the top? You're only a lot. I'm not talking not about really. like the tab itself, I'm talking about like, 
to the bottom tab. So it'll just be uh, a jig. Yeah, yeah. Like jigs. Oh yeah, the taps. Yeah. Oh yes, jigs. Yeah, jigs. Yes. Jigs are nice. Right. All of these. Yeah, jigs. Uh, universally, yes. Like once this is stabilized, then 3D printed jig kits would be a product. Yeah. 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 Question. Yes. Is it industry standard to call those temporary pieces blocking? No. No. There's no standards okay. for okay. that. Probably a. No, there's no standard that I know. I, the, there was a suggestion of calling them temp tabs, which for me, I don't understand Ooh. what they were. <laughs> the but how much would that, how much butterfly no, no, that would that be if we change that? No, start it. Okay. Because if the butterfly starts, then yeah, some other people can also fly with it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, if it's more descriptive, yeah, that's good. That's better because blocking doesn't, you know, what is that? Or tab, what is that? Yeah, the temp part is probably pretty temp helpful. Temp tabs. So we all, the adding the temp in there so we all know that something needs to remove later on. Yeah. Or alignment, maybe, too? That was a lot of words. Alignment tab. Alignment temporary tab blocking. There's <laughs> 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 acronyms there. Oh, that's that's <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's value added. And little values like that, like all together, every little detail being nailed like this makes this a very powerful thing because it's easier and better. Next. So, front right corner adjust. Whoa. Okay, so that was like the long acronym there. It happens that, so this is getting into where are we adjusting and why. L let's go back to this one. Front right, what, what did it say? Front right? corner adjust mm -hmm. so can somebody tell me in here where is that what number is that front right one corner eight. adjust one of eight, yeah. eight so from that slide which which I got it off the the legend here one of eight says front back right corner adjust so it's not only front it's also would be on a, this same thing is on the back but let's take a look at the one instance which is front right corner adjust so what's in that name in that name is that we're actually adjusting at that panel what's it mean for an adjustment panel to exist how what are its dimensions instead of four feet what do we say How much, if it's adjustment, is it know. larger, is it bigger? Okay, so what is adjustment? Is hard for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'll pretend we I never got around to that. Okay, but <laughs> tell me in millimeters. We know, we, we can convert. It's about this much, I'd say. It yeah. is, but bigger, smaller? Well, you have a set, you, you create the panel slightly smaller to yeah. keep an adjustment. Yeah, yeah. And that measurement, I'm not sure of what the gap is. Yeah. But it's you want that. a maximum one inch tolerance. Yeah, it's like 50 millimeters, it's like 1.5 inch. Okay. Or so, uh, like 40 or so millimeters. This much, so it's the width of a 2x4, which is 1.5 inches. A 2 by lumber here in America is 1.5 inches, mm -hmm. which is like 25 plus 12.5, like 37.5 millimeters. Um, so it's that adjustment. It's in this. Why? Well, let's let's continue. But, but first, is, is that true? Is it one and a half inches? Is that what your yes. plate is? Yeah. Is then why not double plate everything that's by a door or a window and get rid of the necessity for this plate? But this soaks up your into your tolerance error. Then what? What? Materials, maybe? Say what? So um, if it's one if it, if it's uh, one and a half inches, I mean, yeah. yours is going above it, but. Doors and windows are usually double plated, meaning that you got two pieces of wood instead of one. This is studs, vertical. Yeah, studs. But, uh, uh, that already exists. That that's already there on a door, door module, and it's needed for structural then purposes. Make then make a third. Instead you have to take away. It with the plate. You have to take away. It's shorter. The door is a finite dimension, mm -hmm. and you have to take away from the door it ends up that the dimensions end up being kind of weird on that. You have to have a specific space for the door, king and jack studs on the door, each one being one and a half, so there's particular constraints there on the dimensions. Um, but you're saying like do it everywhere, that would be very wasteful. 
No, do it in four places where you need plates. Or, I mean, I, I say do it everywhere because it, it's my natural inclination that if it's going to be a window or a door, it needs to be. And yeah, you guys do have that jack, the, the king studs, the jack studs, everything is correct. All you got to do is add another one. In my mind, the way I'm thinking of it in my mind is all you do is. Yeah, but you have to re replace add with subtract. You don't subtract add. Subtract what? Because you're shorter. You're shorter in the adjustment module. You're subtracting, so we said that it's 1.5 less. Like you said. In case it doesn't align. Yeah, you that in case that it, you know you get too much, the walls end up being a little larger, everyone adding a little more, that the walls actually don't fit on a 32 mm -hmm. feet. And you want to do that through the... If they don't fit, we've done something egregiously wrong. <laughs> No, that's called wood. <laughs> if you were working in steel, <laughs> that would be fine, but wood is all over the place. Mm -hmm. At the end, it... Uh, if you're working in... An inch in a... Yes, it does add up, man. And it's also... What is your plate made of, then? We got all 2 by 6 lumber. It's all over the place. That's the thing. Builders Experienced builders would be able to do it. Yeah. Inexperienced builders will not be able to do that. So we're designing for anybody in the world to do it. So it's not a big cost to, to make one module slightly smaller to do it. I mean, an experienced builder will, will fix any mistake. Here, you have simple adjustment mechanisms to allow for mistakes. I make, I've yeah. made a lot of mistakes. I always make those mistakes in the doors and then adjust them in or out yeah. as I need to, to, to. Sure, sure. But if you allow for that, that's the difference between a 30-minute build with four teams and, like, a few days. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the difference. So, so yeah. we're talking about extreme manufacturing. This is uh, extreme. This is, we're being radically attentive to the little details that are the difference between a one-second thing and a 30-second thing and stuff like that. I think you know? this, this plate thing is... Me. I've never seen a house where it's like, well, we got all these modules and then we got these weird little gap things. Yeah. You know, that's so, all I'm saying. Yeah, the first thing is that nothing here is uh, like in real life because we take what's in real life and, well, real life and modif we typically modify it. Like, which you will see that if you show this to builders, this thing, they'll be like, you're nuts. Even the Mexican workers tell us we're nuts, <laughs> <laughs> and they left. And we're serious. If we listen to them, then we have the standard house, which costs three x over what we're doing. That's the end product. I mean, no, 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 I'm just saying we <laughs> that's, listen that's to them and say, "Hey, how do we make our stuff standard?" They don't care. We, look, if you're going to make our if, stuff standard, do we want that people is to build these everywhere? Yes, we do then we have to make it to where any carpenter does not run away every time he sees the house. I, I don't think so. I, I this is not for carpenters. This is actually not for carpenters. This is for everybody. Carpenters are a small section of the population. It's like a lot of people come here who are programmers who are saying, let's use GitHub and this and that, which is complex for a novice. We're saying, no, no, we're not designing for the 0.1% programmers. We're designing for the 99.9% .9 of right. the others. Or FreeCAD, right? Or FreeCAD. You're missing out, like, like Linux. There, there are two major contributions. So are, we're, we're, not saying contributions. we're not saying Linux, not use it. Linux and Git. Yes, I am a programmer. Uh, Linux and Git. No, I, I, I just can't emphasize that enough, that Git is a contribution to humanity. And, and if you don't know how to use it, then you're, you're really missed out. You're looking Especially at the for a yeah. yeah. you figure out how it works. What's that? You're looking at the best six months of your life as you figure out how it works. No, 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 no it's, not, it's not either. It's and. We use that where it's applicable. We use wikis where it's applicable. There's no controversy there. But Git I is I a powerful like a, tool. I, the point I'm trying to make is you shouldn't say to yourself, well, we have to accommodate this insanity because most people just can't make the technological leap. And I'm saying that it's a trade-off. That sometimes the technology, you know, training people in Git is worth it because it's that much better than doing it any other way. And would you say that? No, I, I can't. I'm just, I'm just giving you a design principle. I'm not, I absolutely have no opinion whatsoever. I'm completely uninformed about this thing that you guys are debating. Um, I'm just saying that it's not a good idea to reason from the position of, yes, we want to make it so that everybody can access it, but 
we're not willing to, you know, give somebody a, a video, you know, a 20 minute video to train them on this way, a new way of doing things, you know. And you know but that's saying, that's we're not, we're not saying we're not going to do it. We're saying that for most people, we're not going to do it. Well, then what I'm saying is, is like you look at that as a training deficiency, right? Like it's a training deficiency. And so you can, there are ways to get over that hump. Like you could absolutely, like we live in a day and age where you can educate anybody about anything uh, no, in a very compact agree. amount of time. Can you give me can, can you give me your five minute idea about what your vision is then and your ultimate vision for the CT Go Home? Solving housing. And what is that? There's a wiki page on what solving housing is. Yeah, I mean I'm halfway. Yeah, but I I guess I would point out too that you're not gonna solve housing edit, uh, this way. Edit edit the solving I, housing I, doc. I, I appreciate the ambition, but if you go anywhere in the world there's places that don't have timber and definitely don't have plywood. Um, so you're solving housing for places where those things exist. Yeah, but if plywood you can find uh, No 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 most clarification. This is V one. CEB's coming next, every single other technique's coming next. This is just the beginning. We're just starting I somewhere I, I that's manageable. Something like, like the, the mud bricks, right? Like mud bricks are universal. That, that is a universal material that you can find everywhere. Uh, you can find uh, concrete almost everywhere. Uh, you can find steel rebar almost everywhere, but to have cut lumber to size, you, you, it, it is standard in the US, most of North America and Europe, but if you go to Africa, you're not always going to find that. It's, it's like segments, uh, like market segments. So now we're getting into the lumber segment. Right? Which is which is fine. So, but I, I think if, you're gonna be if your goal is to solve housing, then you're going to have to really think more in terms of market segments, that you're designing a house for a particular locality in the world. Uh, the Earthship people have made the same mistake. They, they, they created their global model. And it doesn't. It isn't global. There's nothing. Global it's not a global it. model. It's a modular construction set that it, you know, can accommodate any type of application. At the end of the day, we're starting that's, as a that's, matter that's of. That's what they want. But I'm saying it doesn't work because they don't face off with this problem, which is that housing is local. It's always going to be local. A construction set allows you to put in an infinite number of building blocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I we use a. With, I think we use like a. Pretty deep philosophical yeah. issues to bring up. Sure. And I think you're welcome to yeah. Yeah, yeah. those future in further, but um, maybe let's put that off till, till the evening or other time when... I would still, if we're still going forward, forward, I would like to understand so I can adjust my expectations yes. to meet yours. I'm There's a concept in enterprise, so we, s we, for the last decade, we've been prototyping. We didn't pay a lot of attention to, to enterprise. Right now, we're very clear about enterprise sequencing and rollout. In other words, simple stick frame, which is what they do in this country, is first before CEB. We've done CEB, we've started with CEB, and we're going to get back to it. But in terms of sequencing and rollout on an enterprise level, you have to start somewhere. In other words, our strategy, right, so that gets into enterprise strategy, which is right now, we can bootstrap fund further development by developing an easy to build stick built house that can fund many people like Christian or whoever yeah. wants to. That's, that's the main thing. It's like develop something that brings in a cash flow to cr cross subsidize all further development. So I'm not disagreeing with any, any of that. Um, I think we're accommodating that in what we have, and if there's any gaps, of course we I can I can hear it. But I, I completely agree about absolute localization. But that is not inconsistent with what we call the construction set approach. You have as many building blocks as you like, and because it's open, and right now you can edit the docs, you can even edit what solving housing means. Go right ahead. Uh, I started this doc. It's it's on a wiki on a page called solving housing. So edit it. Like, like, like add your, add your stuff not, into it. We're not misaligned in this. I'm just trying to bring it back to like, if, if you're going to reason about this small design principle, like, like going tracing your reasoning back to certain sort of core values. I think that that's that's all I'm saying is like, let's just focus on this component, you know. And, and well, we are tracing this absolutely to core values, 
embodied in OSC specifications. Sure, so and, and I guess I'm saying that I don't think that some of your core values are, are actually uh, what the core value that you should have. Um, I, I think that... Um, why is, when the, you, why when is you, there the Linux kernel? When you focus on a... a why is there like 30,000 30, things of this one kernel? One kernel changed everything, and it's the same kernel of a different iteration because that one kernel was perfected and perfected and perfected and perfected and it can't be perfected by another outside OS anymore. Okay. That's what I'm saying is like, I want, okay. our kernel has got to be the, the, the Unix backbone of strength that when Schumacher homes, any of these big boys, we have to be able to compete with them. In order to sell our idea, that we, if we're selling a family home, the idea of a family home is safe, number one. Creating models that don't adhere to natural other building codes and standards will, will scare customers. It'll make it hard to understand the idea we're trying to sell, and ultimately it will be more difficult for us to build it. Like, I don't even understand. I agree that. with you completely. Well, Our work is like not contradict better. anything what you said. Well, sure. I argue about it. Yeah, we we, we can table the discussion. The only point I'm trying to make is that housing is local, it's not global, and it's different than software, and it's different than a lot of other open source concepts. And so there has to be an allowance that you're you're targeting a segment of the housing market. You're saying, I'm going to make a house that targets these particular markets, and and that's what we're going after. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I love the idea of everything else that you spent. I'm like, I think that's a good one. I'm like I think out. what you just said embodies scarcity mindset. We're not saying we're going to solve for one segment. We're saying that we're actually going to solve all the segments at the and, end and of I'm the day. And I'm saying that that will prevent you from capitalizing. You will not be able to generate yes. a capital uh, business that can make money and compete if you're trying to build this everything. I just mentioned about sequencing and rollout. There's a sequence to that. I'm not saying we're, we're going to do that right now. I'm saying we're going to do this and then altogether it's going to expand. Sure, but defining the initial, like who are you going after? Like I, I think that's just sort of an essential part of every business plan is to start with like, this is, this is our customer and this is what we're building for our customer and we have these ambitions Okay, so that's a that's that's pretty cool. I completely agree with that. And maybe we need to clarify our cu our customer. Right now, we've had plenty of discussion on that topic, and we we're pursuing one avenue. Maybe we we should take that up in an enterprise session and say, okay, we're going to nail this exactly is a better customer segment. Yeah, I, I I can't emphasize enough that you have to do that. You know, initially at least, like to get get the thing bootstrapped. Like once it's bootstrapped, like you'll have money, and then you can. I thought that was what was happening. Yeah. That the That's what I thought too. That, the, that this is, that <laughs> because we're using cut lumber. That's, 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 not, what I'm, that's not what I heard. What I'm, sure. um, that I'm not mad, I'm just saying. Um, so that I thought that since we were using cut materials, we were assuming that this is the sector that we're targeting. And that we're assuming that we're going to expand to sectors that don't have the cut materials. But this is. We're starting from here. So, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is when you're making these kinds of small design decisions, I, I'm hearing, oh, well, we're, we're going to make a small time design decision because we're targeting global. And I'm saying, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, you're not in that stage. Like, design the thing for that initial customer. Focus on that. Make that, you know, how you reason about these kinds of design decisions. But that is, we, we have a tight, tight thing of, I think it's tight enough at the place that anybody could build it or professionals could build it if they want. I mean, okay. I, I I'm not going to, I've already made my point, so I'm just going to be quiet. Mm -hmm. I think what might be happening is that um, we're talking about two things, accessibility and like for the general human being, ease of build is one thing, and then like location materials, like how that's going to work together in a place is another thing. Like there's... Is that where we're having trouble? No, mine is design. Okay. Design. Okay. There's a reason the houses are built the way that they are, and it's been perfected over two years. Been I'm not saying we got to copy it. I'm not saying we got to copy it. I'm saying the design, the design principles of safety, are not in your, are not in your house. That's all I'm saying. You're wrong. Like I don't, I don't. Does, does anybody? This is completely code compliant. What this expansion board is? Because I don't. I don't know what it is. Why do you, okay, let's, let's back up. I mean, this is kind of interesting because we get into this kind of debate, basically this, this industry standard versus freak stuff like we do. And we put a lot of thought into the freak stuff based on the industry standards. 
So, for example, why do you say that, just safety, why are you even beginning to think that, oh, this will not meet code? Is that what you're saying? or? Yes, sir. I'm saying that I've never seen, and I've been, I've been obsessed with this for a year. I've been obsessed with this for a year. I just wanted to yeah. say that, like, I mean, obsessed. Yeah. Every design I've ever seen, I've never seen anything like the one that you've done. That's not a bad thing. I'm just saying conceptually, I can't understand the why, and it's having me, di it's, it's making it difficult to understand the, you know, the actual doing it. Are you asking, or you're asking Marchin what part he doesn't think is safe? Is that what yeah. is happening? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm it, curious about that too. What yeah, what, is, what is not safe about it? Do you see that it's like, because I mean, that to me. So, does anybody know what those dark black lines are? Which dark yes. black lines? No, the dark black lines. That's all we're talking about. Have, 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 we're just talking about tolerance there, and but listen to y'all. I mean, it all comes down to what, what's on the blueprint for for from a building. If we get the blueprint, whatever it's got on there, we follow what's on the blueprint. Like the thing so is if, the if, yeah, if you got all these details in a in a. a Way where you convey it to the builder, we just follow whatever is there. We don't make it really matter. Yeah, I mean, um, since this is a quite a representative kind of a dynamic that gets here, no, just 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 let's stop for a second. Like for example, well, I mean, my specific question is, what is not not going to work about it, or what no, is I, I, not safe or structurally so it, unsound? It's, tolerance. it's an abstract idea that we just have some space that we can use because of the warping of the oh, board. That. It's that's all that is? Uh -huh. It's not a practical Up to an inch and a half? It's so all that is is just potential space. Mm -hmm. Which is going to get filled. Okay. Right, but it's your tolerance space. It's like, it's an absence yeah, yeah. of space that you can utilize if needed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Then I, I can wrap so, that a little bit around. So I would like to point out about making assumptions. So, um, what, what, I want to happen here all the time is whenever there's something like that, like what we went through right now, uh, come to it with a mindset of curiosity, not judgment. You made a judgment, this is not safe, right? So reverse that and come to it with curiosity is why are you doing it that way? Well, you called it a plate. You were calling it a plate and that, that confused me because a random, these four random plates, that's kind of a... Uh, a different idea but if it's just a space yeah where it has the ability to be adjusted that makes that makes sense that sure. makes more sense I I, I must have misheard it or not really understood mm -hmm. but if it's just absent space with the ability to adjust for whatever then okay uh, yeah I'm no sorry, it's we're not going to mm. yeah this is uh, so, so real quickly let's be we asking about the purpose of the design modular uh, manufacturable uh, either on-site or off-site, and, and then interlocking where these things are going to interlock, and it allows for stacking of multiple floors, right? I, in my Modular, design. open source, expandable, buildable at the lowest possible cost, some of the well, major... Sure. I mean, those are your, like, high-level principles. I'm talking about, like, what They're very well baked into this. This thing that we're doing. Absolutely, we, we're 100%. We're doing, like, Lego blocks for panels, and, and we Pretty want them to, to snap together in a way that's going to work, that takes yeah. into account the tolerance of the variation of wood. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And I'm just clarifying. Just clarifying. Yeah, that's but what we're doing. those are not, like you're saying, big abstract things. They are not. No. They are very well baked into every single design feature of this and um, if they're not if it's not good enough then we continue to make it closer to that vision because we're saying that um, we believe we do believe in perfection but once again like modular perfection you can do anything with a tool set so like for example I want to bring up that the concept of like that there is no perfect diesel engine and this goes back to collaboration so this is like a another meta point that's important in this discussion. So one claim here that we make is that society does not collaborate. Uh, if you study diesel engines, like you always be like, go on the forums and people will be like, there is no perfect diesel engine. This one's good at this. And there's like whole clans dedicated to, to this yeah. one, this and that. Um, that's an artifact of the current industrial system. It's where the manufacturers do not collaborate. Altogether, collaboration is like zero because everyone keeps their stuff proprietary yes. and you get inferior stuff. 
we're saying we're actually breaking through that by continuous iterative development and open collaboration. So uh, if there's any lacks, it's to be filled. And I guess the question was, uh, where do we start at the kernel? Uh, that's an interesting point about the kernel has to be perfected. And we approach it a little different than Linux. Uh, yeah, the Linux that, approach that, that is I, I just have to say that we should not use software to reason about the real world. Like, like they just—they mm -hmm. really do not have connections. Like, there's a reason why we can like we can build so much stuff in the cloud that you cannot build in real life because we just have this insane flexibility and mentally to restructure that it doesn't exist in real life. I think the metaphor but the design, true. the design principles of how Linux was designed and developed, that does apply to hardware. That's open source, right? That's open right. source. That's it's open not, source. It's not right. software. Uh, I'm just saying that we discovered this better way of working together because software is so flexible, which yeah. is great. And I think it's amazing to bring it down, but I, I, I just can't emphasize enough that if you feel like, well, it worked in the software world, and I want to bring it to housing or some other material field, that that's going to lead you down a lot of dead end roads in design. And that what we want is the open source principle. We agree with that, but not we don't want to use software development principles in building houses. Um, I, I, I agree. agree. Like, like, I say that it's a, it's a useful metaphor. Um, to your point, there are limitations to that metaphor. Right? But as long as you understand those limitations, I still think it's a useful starting or jumping off point. No, I, I like. I mean, I, 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 real quickly, I'll just say I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to be quiet again. Um, software is like building a giant Ruber gold gold Ruberg machine that just does all this insane crazy stuff. I've worked at Verizon, I've worked at Bayer, I've, I've worked at like four major companies, and when you get in their code bases, it's a mess. It's a giant thing that just barely works, breaks every day, but because it's easy to change software, they can get away with that. But you don't get away with that in building physical things. In physical things, the thing has to be end-to-end -end complete, and it has to all fit together. And engineering real-world things is so much more precise, Or in software, we just get this uh, ability to be sloppy, and, and it just happens over and over and over again. And that sloppiness also means that sometimes a company will just be like, throw away their entire software and just start over. And that you just can't do that kind of thing in your life. When I was at Earthship School, every single Earthship that they failed at still exists, and people still live in it. And so they have this like 40 years of construction. Well, what is the definition of failure then? If they're still living in it, it's succeeding. Because because they put their uh, interns in the in the really crappy ones. And that's, <laughs> that's the definition. <laughs> uh, interns and students go to the ones that nobody wants to live in. But we, you can tour each different level of worship and see where they were learning at each step. But these things don't go away. Like in buildings, like you know your uh, tractor out there, it's still there, right? Like it's still instantiated. But so you stopped investing into it. So if you stopped investing into it in a sense you had thrown it away. A so little bit picks it, it up, doesn't Airships mean. are built with concrete. Lots of concrete and these tires and really heavy and housing is especially just not something that you're going to come along and wipe out. And uh, but I'd like to introduce place. like Earthship is highly unmodular and all of that. Here we're talking Without about... Without a doubt. And, and, and then here back we're to highly that. modular. We were, we were talking about like what are the what are the design principles for this particular thing that we're doing right now? And, and I, I was just trying to get at what those were so that we could... I don't think your that, argument is entirely on track. based in reality in that, that, that what you're saying that doesn't happen is exactly what happens. People just walk away from houses. Sure, but they live in them for a long time. And, and if you, but or if you see like that two years, less than five, if, if whatever you were to look into earthships, market rate says. If you look into earthships around the world, they built them in places that were inappropriate uh, for that construction, and they were abandoned immediately, and they're still there, abandoned. So you have to be careful with housing because you get in a position where somebody takes out a loan for hundreds of thousands of dollars, builds the thing, and then they live in it for a year, and, they, and it's unlivable, and then they abandon it. Yep. And and you only need two or three people to have that happen to them to make it whatever your company is, the reputation of your company is going to go to shit, and nobody wants it. For but but even within that, like one of those houses being shit, like so you could walk away from it, somebody else come along, like a craftsman, a remodeler, and then they could start remodeling it to be exactly what they want. I don't so think like that's, that's part of your argument is that like a house is not uh, fixable after the fact, and uh, history argues that that's one hundred percent not true. 
the most houses start as like one piece that's kind of jaggy and then you build another piece and you build another piece and then sometime later on you have a castle and people are like well what is that thing for and nobody knows but at one point it was a it was a thing sure um but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about building like manufacturable houses that are modular but you also all these components part of your argument is yeah. is that you're, you're saying that there's like this physical world and there's a software world and that like with the, the difference between the two but there there really isn't this is just like being stuck in like a, a not being able to adjust for again abstract okay, to a well physical I, if, if my argument is not convincing so that's fine i accept that i think i, I think i can tease apart something okay sure, sure. so originally martin you, you made a metaphor that i thought and you, you compared you were comparing housing and software was a metaphor, and you were using that to explain the concept of creating something that my mom could build, mm -hmm. I think, right? Yep. And so, I'm not a software person, so for me that makes sense, because I'm like, yeah, I have no idea where to approach mm -hmm. GitHub and Linux, and I know that they're great, and I could learn how to do it, but I probably won't for a while, <laughs> because I, it's, it's just still beyond my wheelhouse. But I, what I'm hearing is the people who actually know software are like, whoa, 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 that metaphor's not right, because you know a lot more about it. And so I'm wondering if maybe we could just like contain the limits of the metaphor and be okay with that. But then also the point that you're bringing up that I think is really good and that, you're, that is, is the idea of if we want to build something that helps people rather than kind of keeps people in oppressed situations, i.e. build a safe housing that can actually sell and can get money for this through this process and all of that, that we don't want to release something that hasn't had enough iterations to prove that it's not going to oppress people. And I think what you're doing is saying, yeah, that's why we're here, we're iterating, we're doing all this stuff, and we won't release it wide scale until it is safe, correct? We publish early and often at the same time. That's true, yeah. And I think so this is accessible at all phases. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying that, too. that when we, we, we have a uh, tendency as human beings to reason analogically and metaphorically, and uh, what that leads us down to often do is take a metaphor and apply it in circumstances that aren't aligned. And, and then we end up with something that doesn't work. So uh, I, I, my only point is that housing is not software. And, and if you disagree with me, I accept that. I think we, I think we all agree. I think, I think we agree. It's just that we're talking about the limits of that metaphor, right? The limits of that analogy. So you're saying that those things are apparent, um, and I agree. But I still think the concept of software development are useful so long as oh, you're really cognizant yeah, of the limits, right? Yeah. I, th of the I fact think that we don't have rapid iteration. Let's go back to the house. That sort of thing. Those are those are distinct differences. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can we drop the philosophy yeah, and get back to the real world? Sure. Or yeah, the real world is good. Uh, we can like resume yeah. it. On, this is a great discussion, but like we all can build a house. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so. And then we, we, sorry. So, um, front right corner adjust. Huh? So first of all, huh? Breaking down. So front side. This also applies to the back side. Right corner. So we mentioned where that was. Wait, what's... Oh, sorry. It's a corner. So, so what do we need to know about this? Uh, what are the differences? This is like a regular module. It, um, on this side here, on the right-hand side here, it starts out normal, <laughs> like the... It starts on a female side. There is not going to be overlap on the... On a, uh, on the end part so it's cut off exactly so three things smaller frame by it will be smaller by 1.5 inches because we're truncating we're leaving that adjustment gap of 1.5 inches uh, there's a nailing block here which is a 2 by 4 going all the way up so this spacing like the three studs there that that's the same all we're doing is we're adding a nailing block and another 2 by 6 um, and then we're trimming the OSB because um, on the left hand side we don't have that lip anymore by trimming it by three quarters so but the point I want to make on this is uh, okay what do we do compared to the initial original panel it's it's pretty much the same but it's cut down just slightly um, where is this 24 gonna be from this side or from that side uh, that's a good question it actually has to be from the end because we, 
everywhere we're on 24 inch centers so it would be from that sense of the logic okay I, I know it's a 24 but this module is not 48 so where are you going to measure the 24 from uh, this side here is the one that gets kind of cut that's where the space is going to be that's those that black line in the, in the thing so the only other difference is the blocking location because the wall now comes here so that's the outside of the house the the light green and we go straight from here so the blocking is inset a little bit to allow for that while allowing you to still uh, get the top plate in there uh, so if somebody had to do this from memory you have to know a couple of things you, you have to know the 1.5 inch shorter size and the rest you can kind of logic out if you understand 24 inch centers you also know that because the panel is a little shorter we're actually trimming the OSB down just a little bit which is 3 quarter so say you had no blueprints and you had to do this you could take your regular panel and do those three things and possibly logic it out uh, you'd be questioning like, uh, what is that well that in there is exactly a 2 by 4 which means that 2 by 4 plus the 1.5 which is 3.5 plus 1.5 there that's 5 and that you got 1.5 more there but that's enough to attach the next wall over through the 2 by 6 so now so this is the corner now you're coming in like this here that's enough to attach the corners are very important this nailing plate is important because uh, you want to get a very tight connection between this corner the two corner pieces so that's the f function of that if you just had the the vertical studs wouldn't be as strong um, so you want to do that for things like uh, your extreme weather resistance for like more than 90 degree winds and stuff 90 mph 90 miles per hour winds so that's an explanation of a corner um, otherwise quite quite similar uh, overhang down to to the bottom is one inch and um, that's it let's keep going to the next one front left corner Um, it's a little different too. These are not, so you got, what are we referring to? So front left corner, um, one F1. So one F1 and one F8 are not going to be the same. It does happen that, so these two, probably are going to be the same. Let's uh, color them in. And I'm going to say that these two are going to be the same, actually. But these are, these are not. And why are they not the same? I mean, we're going from left to right in the design, so yeah they're just different they're not mirror images or identical or like 180 flips or anything they're a little different just slight details um, now if you had to so we saw this so now we do this they're not mirror images but what's the difference there it's a male leading edge versus female trailing edge here it's that's cut off even before we had a female trailing edge there but that's you know we're, we're just slipping one going from left to right slipping the male into female as we go along so that that would make sense also has the nailing plate just like before same logic so if you were left without blueprints for it you can start with a, with a standard 4 by 8 framing but you know it's 1.5 shorter so you gotta cut it down to 46.5 uh, the OSB is going to get trimmed. Oh yeah, but here it looks like it's going to get trimmed even more, isn't it? Because we, right? It's going to get trimmed by, I believe, 1.5. Because you're starting on a panel that's already shorter than uh, 48, which is 1.5 inches, right? And then you're also cutting off another 0.75 for 
for the male n. So it's actually like 2.25. I think that's what the number works out to. Um, it does get a little complicated, uh, but if you get stuck on it, um, I mean, you can see, like, say you're out there and, and you actually build this thing and you put the piece of OSB on it, make it look like this in order to make it look like this. you'll notice that like you know so you say you have this picture to work from you'll notice you, you know that that's going to be three point uh, three quarters there so you'll know how much you have to cut off that side it'll probably be 2.25 so that's one way to verify it um, there's a lot of constraint based concepts here constraint based like you c the material kind of tells you that we know we're still using the pre-cut nine foot studs so you know that the height the, so here I'm, I'm seeing like if you know everything about everything else it's literally like one perhaps like one piece of information which is that 1.5 inches shorter that's you have to remember that wherever the top ends up it ends up now where's I mean is that self constrained yeah it's a 2 by 4 in there and you put the put the 2 by 6 wherever the 2 by 4 ends mm -hmm. you don't need to measure anything you use the material itself to butt up next make a fit that, so that top bar there is less than 48? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got him. Uh, there's a message here from Katarina. Yeah. What's Just it a say? Uh, heads up, I found an error on the CD for the window. Corrected and re-uploaded the model. Please make sure you're looking at the latest version. The dimensions on this file, slide 11, are correct. Okay. Yeah. That's another doc, okay? Okay. Yeah. Was it ever argued to make your um, space on the concrete uh, a little bit wider even though it wouldn't be a common measurement in order to tr truly make every panel the same? That was argued. Uh, you're going to get into trouble if then you're going to expand the second story platform which is made of 4 by 8 sheets so it ends up being 32 uh, by 16. Gotcha. Right. Some part has to be irregular. So it's just Some, right. Something has to be. You know, to keep we decided to m keep everything standard for the house itself being 32 by 16. Now, 32 by 16 to where? To the sheathing, exterior siding, frame, those are your options. Inside of the frame? No. You can't sit on the corner of it. Which is it? It's actually, we decided that that be the framing because it's the framing where everything sits. Like for example, the 32 by 16 second story floor sits on a framing. so. You you want to have the framing outside edge even with the foundation outside edge and that being 32 by 16 yep. uh, so let's go more because we can also logic out um, what else is here S side left ah, okay so this is a different module so now we talk about the sides the sides are different um, Uh, if this has been re-uploaded, that means all the links here are still correct, so that that message should be cool. Um, side is the short side. So you see on a short side, because you have the panels on the long sides, they all end up being, the short side panels end up being much less than, than uh, 16 feet total. So we have the corners at which we are shortening them up while keeping aisle 4 and aisle 3 the same 4 feet. Yep? Sorry. Was it ever talked about that this being a straight line, boom, 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 rather than having this could go to connect like this, but this one inverted into here yeah. to connect to that, just, because uh, I know there will be a, a large cell and everything, but these are kind of independent in, 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 in each way as well. Yeah, if I'm understanding your question correctly, yes, that has been discussed in the sense that because the structure of the floor uh, rests on the long walls, you want them to be uh, throughout as opposed to uh, getting in the side sides. They're not struck. They're not really load bearing. It's the front and back that are load bearing because across this we're spanning all the joists. So the front side wants to be as strong as possible. 
Does that make sense? Does that, does that kind of answer it? Yeah. So that means that these corners, all these corners, 1L2, 1L1, 1R1, 1R2, they're shorter. They're shorter by um, how much? For the frame. If they don't have the adjustment, like this one's going to be even short. Hmm? Front, back, left corner. So, uh, so we're breaking up the difference between, um, like these two remain identical, rem remain the four feet. So how much are these, the, uh, say one or one, one or two, how much are they shorter than four feet? An inch and a half each, or three inches total? Much more. Oh. It's the width of a, of a two by six. Yes. Right, so right. five three, three quarters each? Five and a half, yeah. Uh -huh. That's good, good, good. So they're five and a half shorter, <laughs> meaning 42.5, not 48. So if you go into the, so that's, you don't even, like if you understand that piece, like you could logic that, you don't have your blueprints, you say, oh, okay, I know it's shorter by two by six. So you know that it's not 48, it's 42.5. Now, what about the plywood on that? We are actually catching, the plywood's gonna overhang, therefore, like this plywood on the front there, In this, I'm going to draw a line for where the plywood is. It's not allowing me to do it. But the plywood would be, not the plywood, the OSB. That would be, the plywood spans over the 1.8 1B1. Uh, so that's reflected now. There, you see the, the overhang. So we said it's the left corner on one side. So say you're looking at the one of the sides, that corner. So where, which is the male and female side? Can you verify that this is actually the left corner, not the right corner? Because the left and right corner are going to be different. Just like on the front, you have the left and right. They're not mirror images, are the same. We have non-uniformity enforced by the directionality that we're building from left to right like we read. So can somebody say that this is... A left corner. Yeah. I mean, it says <laughs> left, but can, no, can no. you see why? <laughs> if you flip it around and look at it from the outside, it has that overhang needs to go on the left corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because you got the wall, wall there. That's right. Um, so we said frame is 5.5 shorter. OSB is cut three quarter. Can someone explain why we cut OSB three quarter here? So we said we're spanning over, so you know we're not cutting anything there. But why are we cutting the OSB? by three quarter there. Where? You on still, top? You still need no. that. Never on top, just on the sides. Both? The next one fits in. One side is one cut instead of two. Sure. Still don't understand why, but, but we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. I hope this doesn't confuse things, so just move on from my question if it does, but this is the, like if you're facing the house, so you're, you yourself are facing north, this is the back left. Yeah. Corner? Okay. No. no. So when you're looking, you're looking from the outside of the house, but it depends on which wall you're looking at. So if you're looking at the front of the house, we're calling the, I guess, we made a convention front, back, left, and right. So if you're on the, Could you just draw like a little quick picture on the whiteboard, maybe. Just well, like the well, left, left, back, right. So it, people understand when you say left, what you're talking about. Left and right. Front, back, left, right. Okay. okay. But there's two corners on the left and the right. So is that the one we were just looking at? Is that so there's the right back wall? Left or the front left? Yeah. Front left. So there's two rights and two lefts on each side, right? So mm -hmm. this is the right wall. So it's called one R. Okay. Yep. 
but this is the left side of the right wall. This is the left, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at the house from outside, we said in slide number one, we are looking at the house from the outside. It's one of the basics. But now you're standing on the side of the house, right? You are standing on the door. You are standing at the side of the house, looking from the outside. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so you're saying that whenever you use uh, relative directional terms, like, like I, we can orient to say we're talking about the right wall. Like I think anybody can mentally do that, but you're always positioning yourself outside of the building, looking at the wall, and then that is how you establish the left side of the right wall. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. Because uh, you can't do like north, south, east, west because it depends how you build it. I mean, we could do that for this build, but it wouldn't be universal. We can't say, right, you this applies it. anywhere to documentation in China and, and the South Pole. Okay. So, you could say right front, but you have to be careful, otherwise, you mm -hmm. could get some front rights and. You know, front right is different than right front. But yeah, we can we can you know, like native English speaker. You, you could you, what you could do is just establish a directionality in, in your diagram. You say north is up, and and then that way you could talk about the east, the south side of the east wall, and and then you wouldn't need to use relative terms, and we wouldn't need position of an observer. We'd be using absolute directionality. Does that make sense? It makes sense for us, but it wouldn't make sense if someone else is building us in a different lot. <laughs> but I know, but I mean, you, you would. Need, what I would say that what you'll need in part of your training package is just establishing the conventions of conversation. You're like, when I say left, this is how you need to, uh, you know, unpack that. And it's just, a, it's just a language convention, a linguistic convention. But I did that slide. Go, well, I know, but it, that obviously that's not enough. Like, this is the third time somebody asked for clarification of that. I, I think if we, honestly, it's so confusing that if I, I was doing this presentation, I would just draw a little diagram and keep it up on the whiteboard so that people can do, can practice that, that mental yeah. projection. Well, we have it's one. A, it's an internal oh, mental yeah. transformation. If, you, if you're talking about the left side panel, I'm like, so what I, I, have to, I have to mentally like put myself into the drawing and then move myself mentally to the positioning that you know that it, that it does that make sense it's a it does but mental transformation you do but I think you have to do that for reality check I, it's I just communication I'm just saying I, my argument is like I don't care what your standard is I'm just saying just make what it what I clear. draw yeah, exactly. you draw it I'd be happy to draw it yeah, yeah. so we already have names for all the panels. Yeah, they called one R two, one R one. We already have. Yeah, that's that's. The but yeah, the the the, la the last slide it says left side panel, right? And is that because they're identical on the both sides? The, the two left panels on both sides. Sorry, man. Have a scooter. Because we have a name for every individual panel, so discussing the left side, we could rather just call it one R two, one R. Yes, but it's also maybe one L, X. So you can. Yeah. So it applies to both. So both sides, yeah. Yeah. So we can have the so same name yeah. for both, but we could also just call them R1 and, and so, so this document marking is in right now is kind of a universal thing. It doesn't apply strictly to the building that we're building, which is in the next tab over. So like in the next tab over, they'll have it's one through uh, a finite number. Like this is meant to be the but convention any general modular for building any general yeah. one. Yeah. So that yeah, okay, then, bit, then, then I see the yeah. generalize with, with this well, document, I, right? I mean to coordinate your building this and say we're actually lab we're gonna take this apart, so we wanna label it so we can reuse it. So because we already put all these names, this does kinda make sense, like one F, one B. Can you put can you put directional in there too? North, south, east, west? Uh, front, front no, space we're south. I mean, they, they're not. I mean, this is it's no, relative no, language, yeah. so I mean, they that, that's the way his, all his plans are laid out. So I'm saying that this is just trying to illustrate the convention of the drawings and uh, to make the conversation, the communication clear. So uh, left side, right side, back, front. You know, so this you if you wanted to mentally project, that would be north, south. East, west. If you wanted to assign a direction to it. What is your? Oh, direction? I know that. I'm. am just saying that. So if we take the. This is top down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, top down. So write that. Yeah, right top view. Is that a permanent um, marker? Yeah, somebody wrote it. It's permanent. If it takes um, <laughs> This is the top view. Okay. And then this is an elevation. So we're taking this wall and projecting it to where I am an observer. So you need a front view. 
um, here looking at this wall and I'm looking at the side so then this the back is the left side so if he talks about the left the left panel on the left wall left panel on the left corner, or the left corner on the left wall it's just convention so I'm, I'm saying that we've had like a number of stumblings already mm -hmm. of communicating that so it, it's hard to undo conventions like this once they're they see then you know mm -hmm. like obviously a lot of work and <laughs> to, to uh, the drawings so um, so anyway this is just to clarify not to dictate an addition not a subtraction yeah. <laughs> thank you can you give you your yeah. This chair seems like a great idea until. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Maybe we can get the smaller chair over there. All right. So, um, how much are you going to cut those be? Maybe the answer is three quarter, but you'll see it obviously when, if you make that, what? How much is that? Five and a half. Five and a half. You want three quarter there because we know that's our standard fit. Cut it, cut it. Whatever, is, whatever that's going to be, I, I think that number is going to be cut and be that. So I think the panel as is will be like right there. So you have to cut that little lip off, and that'll become obvious to you. So I would call it constraint-based design. It's like material informs you what to do. Let's do that. Windows and doors. We don't have enough in radical concept. As w what is? Uh, the material informs you. It's IKEA. But it's yeah, I mean, I get <laughs> like when, yeah, I, when I, mean, I play with Legos. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I know. That's um. Because use this term side. Yeah, that's a comp that's a principle of design. Like, uh, for example, polka yoke, which is you design things to fit only one way. That, that's there too. Yeah, it's a good good principle. That's what I'm saying. Like. If you use all the information around you, if you can interpret it, this becomes easy. Like ideally, I would go in there, no plans, I'll build everything. I think you can get, you can do that too, pending, I mean there's only like, I don't know, how many bits of information, 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe up to 100. But if you know all of those, you can build one of these houses or any variation of it. Um, and we should actually line up at the end of the day bits, like one bit, like for example, the OSB is 4x10. That's how many bits of info is that? What was that? Um, uh, Lego? Poka yoke? Poka yoke? P O K A Y O K E. It's on a wiki. Did I lie? No, that's a correct spelling. Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, it doesn't come up on the way. So, okay, so just finishing. How do you poke a yoke? How do you materials based constrain design your window or door? I'm saying that you can get, take the materials we have, build this. Let's not worry about what goes inside of it because the same thing is going to go inside of it. This fits both windows and doors. We're saying here, in order to enable easy build, or like a workshop build like this, where it's easy for us, we can do this. So what are the other things you need to know? So what size is this frame, first of all? 4 by 8. It's 4 by 8. No, four by nine. Well, four by nine. Four by nine. <laughs> almost, almost. But whatever it is, we know we're using the pre-cut studs, which are those in the middle. So that will, like, if you didn't know that information, you could still build it. You could say it's four by eight, but you're actually building four by nine, and it should be okay. Because the material is a pre-cut stud. It's got a top plate and a bottom plate. So the king stud there spans between the bottom and top plate, so you got the standard frame as everywhere else. Next, that's a 2 by 12 That's the fat boards. We're actually trying to keep this to like, ideally we would keep it to one material, like a 2 by 6 <laughs> But you can't. Um, you could if you like put them together, it makes it a little hard. So right now we're using 
two by sixes and two by twelves. That's it. Ideal, we'd have one VOM material, and that will be very soon when we get the three D printing up and running. We're three D printing all of this, so it's one plastic trash. But now we've got two by six, two by twelve to worry about. Primarily, that's that's about it. And they so might be in different lines. Sorry, so I just want to rewind just just real quickly. I don't want to distract from one conversation. Yeah, but you're you're gonna replace paneling with printed plastic eventually. That's your mm -hmm. goal. Yeah, first what we'd like to do is n all the non-structural stuff, because for structural, th that's the next game, which is getting the certified by uh, material certifications agencies. If you're going to do this, especially uh, for people that pass that passes code, stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, we'd like to. We're building the four by four by eight printer. They'll be printing this really? this month. Wow. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Very, very exciting. That's our goal. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. So thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Can we do one more time, please? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, it's, uh, uh, kind of so, so can you do plastic as a uh, structural wood, Mary? Is it just a matter uh, of like increasing the thickness, or is it, 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 it works when you first? It's get for panels, right? It's, it's not about increasing the thickness; it's, it's about decreasing the thickness because it's stronger than wood in some properties. It depends. It, it plastic is the the thickness 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 is about five thousand psi. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, that's not too bad. 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 Five thousand to fifteen thousand psi. Plastics is that in that same range, about five to fifteen to twenty or so. Very cool. So, so you can you'll replace it. Load bearing. Yeah. Uh, very. Yeah. yeah. So, so then you just have to get like your structure uh, certified, and then, or you need the material certified, or everything. Both? Everything. But you have to do that once. Once we do that, that becomes available. That gets into quality control, distributed quality control. Yeah, that's that's a you know, it's a it's a deal, but it's doable. Are you going to be using primarily Type Five plastics then? No, everything. Everything. Okay. You want to be able to do the whatever scrap plastic you can melt down. You enable that by high temperature three D printers. Common printers like what we have without a high temperature chamber can't do most plastics. You get access to all plastic printing with high temperature chambers. Is so there a five percent type five? What's type five? <laughs> type five is the highest grade of plastic. So basically, um, the higher the the grade type five, wh what you're going to run into is if you go with the lower grade plastics. Um, I, I don't know about the mixology of it, but you're going to get inconsistent uh, levels and readings of, of what your expectations are. If it's a okay. if it's a, a wide range, you'll be fine. But if you stick to a uh, ratio type based system, I think you'll find you'll get the type of thing you want, like a 75, 60, 40, whatever like that. Uh, that's what they primarily do in the recycling component. Keep all the type five. A lot of that other stuff we just ship somewhere else because the type five can be reutilized. It can be quality controlled, you know, things like that. That's one of the limitations of the current system. Um, I think that with the high temperature printers, you can do everything, but it doesn't mean that you you want to do everything that's structural. There's plenty of non-structural, non-load bearing parts, there. Um, so we can do a lot. Um, why the industry doesn't do certain things, or why I think it's a limit of technology right now. Like there's only economics of it, um, how valuable something is. If um, so. I mean, this gets into a whole realm of this is like citizen science, figuring out, okay, what are the blends and mixes that work well? What are the sourcing, what's the type of sourcing that works? And Because uh, alloying plastics, you can mix, there's plastics that mix readily with one another, others that don't. There's all kinds of material science that goes into that, and that's a lot of uh, collaborative development that can happen all over the world with different material feedstocks. Now you, you do have certain industrial feedstocks that are well known, like plastic jugs in the United States or whatever, PVC pipe, you know, car bumpers. They're made of certain things, and if you know enough about them, then you can be pretty accurate about predicting things, which will be important if you're talking about highly engineered structures, which will be not important if you're not doing structural work. So there's all kinds of applications. So you can do rubber glazing, like polycarbonate. So think of the aquaponics greenhouse printed by uh, recycled polycarbonate, which is like CDs or 
many other things. Yeah, it's uh, quite quite a treat what you can do. We'd like to do the car car tires or tractor tires from the the, the it's called TPU thermoplastic urethane. Do you feel good about about doing that with the, in FDM style where you're using a computer controlled glue gun for everything as opposed to like doing like a sheet material extruding one I feel sheet. great about that because to do the other things you're getting into a dedicated piece of equipment for everything. Mm -hmm. So the advantage of the 3D printer is you have the ability to do any kind of geometry. So if we have a minimal microfactory, you can fit a 4x4x8 four by four by printer, but you cannot fit a sheet line, a tube line, which are all like buildings in themselves. So that's that's the microfactory concept. You use multi-purpose multi generalized equipment uh, along the lines of flexible fabrication, which is discussed in a book called Second Industrial Divide, if you want to read more about it, how history has shifted to centralized production as an artifact of economic, of pretty much political and various forces, as opposed to possibility. There's various possibilities of doing things either distributed or centralized. Uh, I like to always go for distributed, and a recent argument that goes for that, like for example, we can be doing spec housing, or we could be builders. We could be developers, or we could be builders. Developers, or like we could be a centralized operation, or we could, could be distributed. So whatever is centralized, more capital intensive, because you're putting in all this capital investment, there's always this huge inertia that's that limits the amount of innovation. So you turn from um, actually meeting needs to making money. So it's always this, I, I, when I look at distributed, I always think about innovation. If you're distributed, man, you can innovate. Um, that's an advantage when I look at the What does innovation mean to you though? Is it the, the furthering of technology? Or is it the modification of existing in order to fit better needs? Or is it a mixture of both? Or is it something different? It's everything, but we like to focus a lot on appro making technology appropriate. In other words, using what already exists in a more appropriate way. Because we have all the technology we need to thrive. It's the bad screen of distribution of access that we're trying to resolve. The, the last question being the uh, thing that economy, economies have not solved, which is distribution of that wealth. And that's... Uh, that comes from appropriate distributed technology that's open to people. So, but back on the... Uh, so, uh, yeah. one, one more question on this then. Yeah. So these designs are set up then for either making this out of uh, essentially traditional uh, wood products or for 3D printing it as one to as print? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the advantage of the panelized construction system that's human scale. So this is like structural in insulated panels. They don't make structural insulated panels this small. Typically, you need a crane for them. So we're doing like the human scale SIP. If you go to 4x8, 4x9, you're still printable at the level of a large 3D printer. Okay. And that's our explicit goal. Yeah. So where do we end up with this? Uh, well, self-housing, part of it you can automate it if it's open source appropriate tech that works. So we're not against any technology. We're we're, uh, we're for using it in a distributed way. Yep. On this two by twelve header. Where do you put that thing underneath it? You can strain. It's a double header. In this case, so the only piece of information is it's a double header because you could fit three in there. There's one in the front and back, not three. Don't need three. Um, you got the jack stud that's underneath that. So one way to do it is okay. You cut your cut your two by twelve. How long is it? If you got two king studs on one side and one side, it's got one and a half. So that's forty-five. Yeah. So the header is forty-five. So without any data for the data you can say okay let's cut it to 45 but you already have made the frame which is the same as everything else so you can measure that and that will be 45 so then you do the this uh, 
bottom part of it's, it's like the header was well, it's, it's like the top plate but it's shorter what is that what is that length of that plate two by six underneath it It's also 45. 45. Yep. And do we need to know that length? We can measure it with the jack stud, the brown, the dark brown. So you can constrain, constraint based thinking. You can say, okay, yeah, I'm going to measure that and do it. Uh, that's probably going to be the fastest way to do it at this point. So I'd just suggest this. Now, what is, real quick, what is the width of a 2 by 12? Is it 11.25? Yeah, not our best thought of making things that each happen than they really are. No, no. So you can say, oh, okay, I'm going to give you all these dimensions, or no, just build it and make it fit. If you have a saw next to you so you can cut readily. Yeah. S is this not th done as a module then, or rather fitted uh, as a last piece? or? No, this is done as a module, and then we put the plywood on it. Okay, and, and the jack studs, will they come up to, like, because you talked about measuring them when you place the, the header and the, the bottom one. <coughs> They'll all be made in the same time. I, 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 I'm just wondering... Are you saying, like, what's the build workflow? Build a step from one to the next? Yeah, because you said that the jack studs would be fitted afterwards and just measure it. Yeah, yeah, so you have to have the header and this plate in there. You can't start with a jack stud okay. if you don't, unless it, we provide more information or you open up the Sweet Home 3D file, we don't know what that is. Okay. So, say you can picture this, you walk in there, can you build this right now? Who could do that? You think you can take this and build it right now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now what about the, the plywood? Can you add the plywood to that? Yes. And you're constrained to... Yeah. Push you to where you Same. It's up. one inch under, three quarters mm -hmm. to the side. Same thing. Um, now, what happens if it's a window? Do you need more information? You do. Yeah. You can put that window anywhere in there. So someone has to give you that info. Mm -hmm. But that is actually determined by the height of the doors, which uh, are so you get exter exterior doors, or say the the French door, the double door we use. They'll determine. We're, we're making it such that the tops line up so the trim looks like in the pictures. It's aesthetic. Now we don't have to worry about where we frame the window because there's going to be more complexity on a window. Like um, it will have its bottom sill, top, and there's going to be some more. It gets complex. We don't need to do that. We can actually do that in place because the logic for today was okay. Let's get all the wall modules up so we can actually start putting on the top plate and the second story, the floor, the, the joists. So as soon as we have any two opposing wall modules with a top plate, we can start laying those joists. Yeah. Um, I should have looked at the the thing, but uh, are the mo are are they um, uh, the modules on top? Are they uh, directly above, or are they all um, half? There's a floor in between. Does that answer that, or? No, are they are they um, aligned? Are they aligned or are they? Um, oh. or are they right there. above the? the are they right above that straight line or are they staggered? Um, explain like, more. Like that. Uh, are they stacked? So the weight is held by two modules below it rather than just one. Wherever twenty-four inch centers end up, and that would be at the seams. So it it, it would be two. I guess does that does that make sense? Uh, not sure how that matters because we've got an effective well we've got a top plate there but I, I guess that does matter a bit because yeah they are they end up being at 24 inch centers which means you're spanning every joint and you're in the middle of that and spanning that those joints yeah, yeah. Uh, we can put the OSB on and uh, we can frame it in from the interior side then but that we can do yeah, we can do that later so that we don't bottleneck the process of getting the s more of the structure up. <coughs> uh, then pe then we can actually take a look. Cause you you kind of have to look at the dimensions on the rest of it uh, a little more. Okay, but this will apply to the door and window. So, yep. um, so we can build two windows. 
and two doors. This actually applies to two doors. Let's see, hold on. What did I say about doors? So the doors aren't 36. Doors aren't 36, but the spacing isn't 36 here either. It's 39. Was it ever? I'm sorry, so I see it. Was it ever discussed to, to put more boards in there to fit um, a more common type of door? Or is 39 a common door that I'm just not aware? Of? Um, 38.25 is pretty common, and to do that, we are going to do that, which means put in more, put in more spacers, which is going to be a, a one by spacer to get that from 39 to 38 and a quarter. Uh, so this is um, this is new. We we have. Uh, before our door and window was a little different. Now we're saying, okay, so we actually we're gonna call that four apertures, uh, two doors and two windows. At this level, we're the same. It's degenerate. I like that word. Uh, <laughs> degenerate design. <laughs> yeah is when if you have a certain goal like you have a bunch of specifications two people on other sides of the world will get you the exact same design that's when you know your constraints are proper it's just the definition of constraints i don't think i've been through a lot of 39 inch doors but that's what i'm saying <laughs> well it's not a 39 inch door it gets right, built through. that's the stuff we got from the nards it's, i think it's got a 30 and a quarter but this can accommodate, this has been designed to accommodate oh, just okay. about any okay, door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You any start door. with wood blocks in there. Blocks in there, yeah. you can do any door. Yeah. Yep. Are they usually smaller or bigger? Smaller. 36 is the most common um, front right. door, and then uh, 30 inches is the most common exterior and interior doors. What the but that? that, okay, there's a lot of detail to what you just said, and that is, if you call it that, that they could call it that, does not mean that the rough opening is going to be that. So there's yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just saying yeah. the most common American bull oh. that you get in the store is are those exact ones. They're probably getting wider. <laughs> yeah, they used to be 30. <laughs> Shit, now they're 30. Shots Sorry, fired, sweetie. <laughs> Spiteful European mess for the day. <laughs> I'll love you guys, don't worry. <laughs> Alright, so... Um, oh, uh, just one, one other design thing is I would make all doors at least 36 or bigger because everybody needs to move in big things, right? Every refrigerator, every stove, all of those, go, yeah. you know, you're going 30 or above. So. And that's why we also have the French door that helps some... Oh, large yeah. things yeah so let's look at the French door what can we logic about this okay what are we gonna build so what do we know eight feet we're not making any adjustments in this too heavy and complicated what we need to know is that the bottom plate there is one foot if that's the case Okay, here we're going to provide more information, and that is what is the size of those cripples. They, they are that. They will determine this plate. What is the length of that plate? It's 48 inches. Well, you got one foot on either end, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Then you got six feet in between? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. This feet. member here is six feet. How long is this one? Eight. Uh, that's 8 minus 3 inches. 8 minus 3 inches. How long is the top plate? 8. eight. eight. So that 8 is a true 8, not true a pre-cut 8. Not so a pre-cut or anything, like true 8. Pre-cut 9, pre-cut 9, or yeah. some other stuff. Yep. 8's 1 foot, 8's one foot wide at the bottom? Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. What do you have there? Um, and is there truly no no bottom plate along the along the bottom of that door? The other door modules have a bottom plate. Yeah, threshold. threshold. Yeah, uh, we do because um, for the doors that has to be cut out. So, uh, but we're leaving it at the same because you can cut it. Um, it's a little harder because you got to do a reciprocating saw as opposed to a circular saw or cut off, uh -huh. but it's not, it, to keep it degenerate to this point, it's okay. So we can build it. 
I, I do see, I think I do see a double, there's a, there's a king stud and a jack stud. Oh, I'm not, let's actually, for, for an exercise, who's opened up the Sweet Home 3D files? Anyone did it? Yeah, I opened a couple. Yeah, so I got the roof side open. So you go to 1F67 and you click on this and it takes you to the download. Exterior double door 9 feet download. And then Sweet Home 3D open. So what do we have for that detail? I am seeing one. one six seven. Yeah. There's one one there and there's two. And there's two. Yeah. Altogether you have three vertical studs supporting each side. That's structurally a spine. The header here is actually triple. You need that for the, the eight foot span. But that's three uh, two by twelves? Yep. <laughs> yep. So there's uh, around the door frame, there's two of the two by sixes, and on the edge there is one. No, no. And you can kind can more or less. It's somewhat visible. Where did my, I can't, I lost my thing in there. Okay, so in the la last slide there, you've got, you can kind of see it, but it's, it's double around the door and a single around that, so. Um, Hampus, skinny you know with that? Okay. So cripples are one, one foot, one and three eight inches. So if you cut those to length, that will be at the right height. Yeah, that's pretty critical. I mean, you can't just measure that, can you? You can't. We don't have, that's information we need here. Yeah. Otherwise, well, you need two bits of information to do this from scratch if you know the system. One bit is that that's one foot. The second bit is that the cripples are such and such. Everything is constrained by the materials you're using, knowing that you're doing a, an eight by eight, well, it's eight this way, nine, nine up and nine is not exactly nine it's nine minus three eighths inch because the pre-cut studs are three and three eighths under that nominal di dimension like a nine footer is three inches and three eighths something like that <coughs> three and three eighths smaller that's very much slightly that smaller than that you don't need to worry about it you're using pre-cut studs that determine that for you Wait, are you? Yes, you are. Where are you using those pre-cut studs to determine the vertical? Oh, they're on the outside. King All the way. King studs. They're the pre-cut studs, yeah. Yep. So, with this info on this page, knowing the system, you can do it. And from memory, yeah, I could do that right now. And then, you're looking at it from the front. Where is the male part? always on the right so this plywood here would be offset in this picture to the right or to the left well it's I could see it's offset to probably that direction right so move the plywood this way so that when you're looking at it 
on the right hand side you've got uh, the leading edge being the, the male yep that's two pieces of plywood next to each other now do we want to cut out that hole yet we can because it's actually the same size that will make it it will make it lighter but also yeah we should probably cut it out yeah that means the these uh, feet will be like a little wobbly without the plywood in between but then again plywood's not attached to anything else so it won't be <laughs> won't, won't matter uh, so yeah we want to cut this out so we put on the plywood and then cut it uh, we could probably like cut it in in place I would say just cut it in place, just cut right next to it. Uh, yeah, circular saw. Cutting in place is infinitely more difficult, but if you're cutting by a constraint, it doesn't. Um, yeah, it's it's more difficult. It saves you the, all the measuring, and then here we'd have to do quite a bit of measuring because uh, we don't have that. Yeah, we could measure. And it's a bit of measuring. You can measure off of this design, but how do you how do you cut it in? Place. What's your guide? I, I know I understand that there's studs on the inside, but you can't, unless you're using a handsaw, you can't put a blade right against the in inside studs, right? Like a saw has a, you know, there's a guide, there's an offset. So I'm just curious, what's the, what's the tool for cutting? I would do it with circular saw, which is, um, you know, you're just one foot off the edge. Um, oh, from the outside? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you put it on the plywood up, just cut one foot off the edge. Okay. That'll be, because that's one foot. And then for up there, well, you kind of have to see where it is, mark it, and then cut across it. If you cut, you'll know when you're cutting into the stud, because it'll be very hard. So it's not a beginner's operation. But you could, you could for instance, uh, drill a small hole at one end of the cut, and the other end of the cut. Make sure you're not in the yeah. Yeah, because you could have like and then snap a line. Yeah, yeah. So it goes on. And if you're like an eighth inch away, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you you know how to do this. So you got to make this. Um, we got to make four of these. We got to make two, 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 two of those, well, let's see, uh, oh, maybe we left out, I don't think I covered, like, the, let's see, what, so we had the standard panel, and then we moved into the corners, so we've covered front, right, and left, the long, yeah, the front means the long walls, which means the same thing applies to the back walls, the opposite corners. So we've got that. Front and back long walls covered. The only thing that has to happen is um, the four teams that are building that have to coordinate so you don't make four of one and you, have, you don't have anything else which we've done last time. We didn't do that, but we, we had like one missing because people made like, I think two of the wrong corner and it, we didn't have parts because we built two of them. We built redundantly, didn't have another. So the four teams that are doing this need to coordinate, okay, which one do you have? Which one are you building? So you can say front, left, right, or rear, left, right. Go off this diagram. I, I would say at this point, what's most clear um, is, is the slide number one or slide number two here this slide I mean just say okay which team has which 1F you know 1F1, 1F8 should we draw that on the whiteboard in yeah. the shop and put yeah. initials by it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Or or label the, the the frame that you have. We'll do that, but I just like I finished mine, what do I need to do now? Let's walk over to the Yeah, you should have a whiteboard or a piece of paper that says names 
row allocation would be names attached to the four corners. Yeah, just an initial something to say. This yeah. is clean and it's in progress. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then people can put in their initials on which other ones they're claiming. If we made a bunch of the regular ones, so which which ones do we think are the regular ones? Um, where was that? Where is that piece of info? And we have already two corners and a bunch of regular ones. Yeah. Yeah, we got four regulars, I think, in one corner. I don't know what corner. Okay, it's two. Two corners. Two corners. Right, so where is, um, how many of the regulars? So standard. Oh no, what I would do perhaps is uh, to coordinate. We Okay, we know the corners, we know we got a bunch of regular ones, and then we can go one by one. Um, let's lay them out. Is it is it supposed to rain today still more, or uh, is it going to cut out? For the rest of the day. Yeah, okay. there's a peak at noon to two, and then it's going to rain all night. Because I was thinking the easy way to do it is that once we build something, we put it in the, on a pad right where it's supposed to go so we kind of can orient both visually and on a piece of paper as far as what we have. Um, well, it looks decent until... Wait. Friday? Well, it looks decent from now on. It's... it's that looks good. Let's lay them right out there. Yeah, just as soon as we got the ones we have already, take them right to the side and try to put it where where it's supposed to be. And we know like, so this one is the door. Uh, we know that one. These two here are the blue windows. Oh yeah. This, um, So the expansion door is 1B5 here, which we frame in just like the regular door. And we didn't talk about what goes on after that, but we can put that in afterwards. We know we've got, so what? what's the expansion? So part of the design principles here, that would be the expansion door too. That's why I say two, two doors and two windows, because there's really one carport door and the double door at the front. In the back, we're framing in a hidden door, something that you already have a header in if you want to expand the house to another thousand feet at the back. We'll do this, put the, all the plywood on it, OSB. Don't worry about what's inside, we can finish that in. It's, it's going to be basically be framed in. I think all it has is one more. That's it. We'll do that later. Don't worry about it, just, just build uh, the regular thing. Uh, but that that was... this thing here so that's the that's the mystery door uh, a little lighter uh, so it looks like can we say so we'll head off to lunch pretty soon but but uh, at lunch, go to file, print PDF, and just download it, uh, or download PDF, and put it on your phone so you can, that's one way to do it easily. Um, but um, are we seeing anything different about 1B2, 1B3, 1B4, 1B6, 1B7? Those all to me look like regular. Does anyone see otherwise? Uh, I think that's right. Those are all the regulars. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, six, seven. Two, three, four, six, seven. Is that? Two, three, four, seven. Which one? Is it? Oh, so he's covering regular modules, um, one type of module, one type of module, and different type of module. Uh, left, 
Three and four are three. standard. Four, four is adjustment module. I'm looking at this color coded system. You're, you're in it. Yeah, that, that's the is that right? Uh, on the Keep going, this uh, is editable. Wait, wait, uh, three. I'm looking at the legend. Four and five are standard, according to the legend. Uh, uh, Martin, uh, Yo. I, uh, the, the left four is an adjustment module, so it's standard with adjustment. Standard wall adjustment module, ooh. Yeah, so those should be like neon green. Is anybody colored <laughs> uh, guys, you can also edit this so you color it in. Um, actually, so one L two and one R two, I think, are same. Yeah, one L two and one R two are the same. So I'm gonna put that. Oh. I need to request uh, yeah, I'm to you do? Yeah. Really? Oh man. Sorry. Okay. Edit. I can edit another one twenty two hour lessons. Oh you looking at that One L one one R one are the same. But actually let's make the these ones here. They're all the same here. Okay, these ones the all the apertures are this. Those are all the apertures, those are the same. It's difficult to understand how each side both constrained in the same space don't correspond inversely. Or either inversely or mirrored. But I mean I, I remember the door. The door of one is, is different. Uh what's the question? Both sides should either be an inverse of one another or should be a, a maybe not a mirror, but I'm no. having difficulty understanding how two sides that appear the same in nature in every way except for the, the way that we're modularizing the panels for them. Because you've got different, uh, you've got a double window, a double door in the front, you've got one. Where's that have to do with the sides? Because it's going to change where you make the changes to any of those of the rest of that. Alright, I'll just take that. I think that each, each side is a uh, different pattern of where doors or or the Okay. And so, one of the changes to so we need eight of the same ones, yeah? Of the standard same. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's adjustment. And
Okay, that looks that makes that 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 ties it. I have just a little bit of uh, Mrs. Jerry's famous potato salad left. It makes looking to try uh, Minnesota's best. <laughs> I also <laughs> bought ice cream yesterday, uh, so if y'all want it, some ice cream. Never had it. Okay, well, it's Minnesota's best potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> and there's never had it. Go on. Yeah, Very serious. I haven't passed Minnesota yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's. And I might. Marcia, I think it's. Yeah. Probably we just have to get through the adjustment module is right there. Thing, thing left to talk um, about. Um, so we haven't really talked about the adjustment modules, right? I guess we haven't talked about Windows either. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We no, we did because we said um, Not like this. so adjustment. I think we already like for example for the corner adjustment we said oh it's going to be one point five shorter. The frame is going to be forty six point five. There's some things I'm into genociding. Like for example this one. Front, right, corner, adjust. Huh? Smaller frame. By 1.5 inch, right? Okay. Nailing block trimmed OSB. Trimmed by. Okay. Yeah, no, I get this, but. Um, yeah. So you, so you have tight tolerances all the way up to there? Oh, what so do we do be, then? It would be the gap, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and what do we do there? Yeah, what do we do there? Oh, that we cut a bunch. Of, yeah, okay. The que that question is, cut a bunch of strips that are 5.5 by 9, and we just slip them in and screw them in. We could, if it's 1.5, oh, uh, then we just need a yeah. 2 by. How do, we, how, do we cut, um, how do we cut that? What's the best way to cut that? Table saw. Let's do a table saw. Table saw with the blade sticking out 5.5 inches. No, no, we, we'll do that. We pre-cut those. Pre-cut those, have them in, in place. So basically, our, our spacer strips, we put, we do that. Yeah. And then get it tight. We can cut, if it's, I mean, half an inch is big, we should cut one that's also a quarter to have that kind of adjustability. Um, okay. And the rest is you seal it, like caulk, spanning foam. But screwed in tight, so it's uh, so we're okay. tight. Top plate bonds it together. Also the oh yeah, and on the outside there's a strip of OS of OSB that ties it together. Right. Okay. So we didn't talk about that, but you'll see it on a frame. It'd be oh, okay. Now we've got this gap. It's probably going to be anywhere between nothing to yeah. Yeah. which we have to cut a strip yeah. Yeah. to bond that. Together. Okay. Finishing. finishing stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's trim. That's finishing, but it's the gap fill. Gap fill would be uh, structural lumber that we screw in there. Okay. Ideally, we could fit, you know, we make a 2 by fit if it's a 1.5. We'll probably we'll have less than 1.5. 1, 1 uh, if we get lucky, we'll get 1.5 exactly, and we can fit a 2 by. Mm -hmm. Less than. You have to cut the modules, right? At the end. I remember on the second Last time we were cutting mm -hmm. modules down, uh -huh. which was a lot of pain. Okay. So, uh, and how, how much was it? Like three? Uh, on one side it was like two and a half, other side it was like sliver. Mm -hmm. okay. So that seems. This is much better. And much better. Much we're better. Doing the this the bus 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 yeah, we made we're making that gap large enough. Yeah, we, we should not get to one point five inches. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. Um because we've got regular OSB and that will be butting up. Yeah. But we you know we're only allowing for about an eighth inch. Yeah error on each one so we may be quite close to it. <laughs> we might right. get unlucky. We might, yeah. might have to uh, make it a little larger. Speaking but of don't this, worry about that yet. This will work now uh -huh. in a ways that you can have like threaded adjustments so that you have a movable mm. wall. So that you know you have like maybe a triple wall with something that can you crank on some screws and it can slide in and out to make minor adjustments. Not not I'm not sure. suggesting it for this, but yeah, yeah. some way to 
make it less finicky so you're not cutting strips. You're still working with the same mm -hmm. kind of, uh, standard clamp. pieces of lumber. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, sort of clamps, but it's almost like a a woodworking vice in reverse. Like a woodworking vice has a big screw on it, and it can suck in this piece of timber on the edge of your woodworking mm -hmm. um, bench. But I'm suggesting a fourth that screw in reverse to push that piece of wood out to butt up against the um, next mod. Does that make any kind of sense? That's that's at a Which, what, what type of, I mean, what type of... Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Roll division. So we've got quite a... Sorry. Pushing it out is going to have to be done from the, from the middle of the swimming that they're already in and, and you're trying to... Because you're trying to get them to go like this to get closer, right? Now? Not like this, just if you move it, you have like three... Oh, the whole thing, okay. Three bolts, and then you move it, and it's like double nutted. I'm not saying it should be double nutted, but that's a way to lock in place. Okay. But that's just a discussion. Let's go to team team workflow division. So actually, before we put everything on a on a soap plate, we want to have a team out there who wants to use or learn to use the laser level. Two people on that just get we put shims on if it's too low in places. We might have to adjust a little bit, like we saw in the video yesterday, for the height of the soap plate because the foundation is a little uneven. It will help us. It'll make our life easier. So that everything just slides. Bam. Do you have right set shims around or just cut? Cut. Uh, I mean, saw. like the. Uh, for example, like the blocks we're using for the blocking, that, that would work. Um, some s scrap stuff that's lying around, like quarter inch. I think we got a bunch. We got a bunch of stuff in the, the storage back there. So, who wants to do that? Sure. I, I, I don't know how, but if I can learn to. Who knows how to do it already? Like who can you're, you're talking about shimming the sill so it's level? Yeah. And like that, level. you'd be bringing up over sills to come up level with yeah. the rest, dangerous proposition. Because I think that, that, isn't it only that corner space over here that's higher? So three There's quarters of the rest is level? We probably, what we have to do is we measure where exactly the level is and decide from there. We might want to just say, oh, we leave it because it's actually not gonna work out. So mm -hmm. this problem solving there, all the problem solving comes about when things don't go right. And that's when the skill is required Otherwise, it's seamless. But uh, we might, we can just leave it as is, or we can, um, we can raise it. So the first thing is get data points, which is okay. Exactly what do we have? Because we, when we measured before, we we have basically had a two-inch slope over the entire pad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we measure all the corners. So right now, what's acceptable? I would say one inch. Uh, if you talk about one inch difference, say you got one inch difference from one side to the next. What's it going to end up in terms of tilt of your walls at 20 feet high? That's the critical thing. You don't want to be leaning over more than like one inch or half half an inch. I would say maximum allowable would be like uh, up to two inch, but because that would be the equivalent as if you had two by four framing. The rest of it is not doing anything. I just uh, have a meta comment uh, in a request uh, I'm willing to do whatever anybody else doesn't want to do so like you can think of me like floater you just plug me in you just tell me where you want mm -hmm. you to go on the, um, so if there's nobody else to do the laser level thing I'll be happy to do it mm -hmm. um, and then my request is or suggestion is is that could we like before we dispatch could we get a list of like teams that are working to do different tasks today mm -hmm. and then that way people can kind of just elect that I'm going to go join team A or team B and, mm -hmm. then, and then people like me that have no preference, then we can just plug ourselves in after that. Could we mm -hmm. do that? Yeah. 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 What we're gonna What we're gonna go do, and then who's working with like where and things like that. Okay. Where do we put it? Um. I mean, on the whiteboard right there. It's just a real quick, you know, pre-dispatch. You know, before we go to lunch. Yeah. Uh, just well, what, put it what we're the, doing uh, and how many PDF, people right? for each team. Like the the last or the first team. Google that location, and then if we change, we can change it there. Uh, so what are where are our goals today? We want to build the rest of the panels the and then do the laser level. Yeah. No, no, we're gonna do the laser. Now I want them to. The goal would be to in install everything and put the top plate on at least. We could do it. I'll I'll get out there and task master it. Okay. Get on top of it. Okay. Each each module is gonna take like 
20 minutes if we're well, actually you, doing it. Since you have that vision for the task game, can, can we get it broken down into some teams? I mean, you can evolve the team over time. But just, just for like, getting us started. Yeah, it's right I, here. I, it's right here. So, okay. two, set the plate level. Okay. Four windows plus doors, eight. Eight people. Okay. Double door, two people. I probably want to do that. Mm -hmm. Joists. That's not, that's not do. Uh, how many people do we have is the first question. So what what are the body count? What's the body count? Uh, I would say I would say oh, the people eight, with 10, the least 12, experience 13. should go into those areas where they can get the most experience in those new areas. Um, probably building the per the regular modules if, if possible, but like anybody that doesn't have that experience. And then maybe maybe like one novice and one that has a little bit. I, of I don't. I, don't I, I mean, who's going to judge who's novice and who isn't? And like that's really complicated. Let's just. Let's go teams and then you know, we team one, which is two people. I think we have four teams. So who, okay. two people who we, we had. Who wants to do laser and level? And and then anybody else wanted to do it? I don't think so. But sure, I mean, you, you just said that you would do it, right? I know, so I'm going to write my name down unless someone else wants to do it. That's nope. a laser level. Laser level team, team one. Right. I'm opting for team two. Okay. Myself. So I'm going to plug myself in here. Oh, yeah. And then we'll go to team two, which is the team. Assembly. Four doors and windows. Yeah, and we need eight eight people. Eight people. You okay. put me down for windows. I think that's Door, the doors and windows. So uh, Eric, Eric for windows. Eric. Doors and windows. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be. We're not framing in the interior. Uh, We're just the frame. Uh, just the frame. Just, just, yeah. just the basics. What we showed. Okay. We're not going. I'll go on doors and windows as well. Okay, Anthony. Who else? We got we got yeah, four spots know. left. No. Yeah, uh, three spots left. Evan. Evan, two spots left. I'll go to the One spot left. <laughs> Curtis's laser level. Oh, oh, laser level. So Lance's team two. Three again. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's okay. Field. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going wherever <laughs> people don't want to go. And the standard model. Uh, so we got one spot open for <laughs> team two. We're we gotta finish them up. I mean, yeah, okay. But that's the, there's no team for that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna just call myself. Then? Huh? I'll put myself in here for now. More, yeah, okay, so team yeah. three is uh, double doors, uh, two people uh, working on French doors. I would like to be Archen and uh, no, well, yeah, okay. and Christian, right? Yeah. Let's see. And team four. Joyce. Joyce. One person. One person. Yes. Ken. Ken? Okay. Ken. And uh, team five. Marking. This is kind of a. I mean, this is a. Do we want to do this? I mean, at some point we got to. Maybe like forget about that. Because the other thing is that we didn't talk about is there's a bunch of modules that we have that aren't, weren't finished for the standard ones. I don't think there's eight. We need eight total. So maybe the team, the eight team, before we start there, because yeah, I don't think we have too many more bodies left. Modules. Yeah, just two, two, four, six, eight. Sorry, sorry. So team two is going to do the team five task too. Let's let's do that later. But the the flow would be uh, we got to finish up all the standard eight. Okay. That we so you're saying really wait finished. wait on wait on those tasks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No so so then this yet. is this is the assignments then. Is there anybody? So we yeah. Anybody? Is that? Yeah. Penny. 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 Okay. Penny. There. Okay. What? On a uh, door. Well, door so window. Got, I think two extra people. Where you want to? We're missing well, one person on the team too. Can we? Though that hand. that could happen by one person each too. So one person's not gonna throw around two by four, are they? Penny. Or does he need a little bit of help? Yeah. Yeah. Can if you need some brute no. force, uh, I got you. And then <laughs> who else? Uh, they're they're fifty pounds each. <laughs> You're just writing your name, sir. Maddie. Maddie. Where, where do you want to go, Maddie? Uh, uh, team two. Let's do it out. Okay. So we've got one yeah, extra person. We need on one team more in team three. You need one more team, on team three? Is team one going to go? team three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll help you guys out. How is the laser level going to go, Marsh? Are we just going to go Don't look at it help. and then all agree or disagree? Don't need it. What? Why? Oh, wow. Huh? It's easy enough. Team, team three is easy enough. Yeah, my, yeah. my only yeah. comment I got a tight, be, man. Uh, I, I would like to see even teams like a, a team should always be two people minimum even if the task only takes one person yeah, because then the yeah, technique for we're going to need more than two to right, carry can, it can but to build it no and the reason I'm, I'm for that is is because then two people are learning whatever that is and and you know that can be important for yeah. distributing knowledge otherwise we silo it
And that should go on team two. Maddie goes into team two. Put Maddie on team two? Yeah. Yeah, it's just like high school all over again then. <laughs> because it's <laughs> goes on an even number. Okay, cool. I can throw a ball, guys. <laughs> Give me a team. 14, yeah. <laughs> Who's, who's got any questions on what team, like, team two first finish the existing eight mm -hmm. modules that are not done? There's like, I think, I don't know, three or four that are complete. Three or four. Okay. And then we can go on. And then go right into the, the window door. So, everyone on team eight, can you picture in your head what, what you're doing? And what is the finish point? Finish point does actually does not have the cutout of the OSB. It has the OSB on it, but it does not have the cutout because we, it's actually offset a little bit and we don't know that yet so you do put on OSB on the frame that we showed so like definition of done this is definition of done plus OSB that's all double header all that yeah no the OSB you put it on but don't worry about cutting it out oh, I see. don't worry about cutting it out that's all mm -hmm. I mean that is quick that's gonna be but you're going to cut if it you're out actually before, working before you actually put it up. Um, would want to do. Yeah, we would want to do the reciprocating saw on that because if we don't do that, then it's not coming up today. So don't have to cut it out because uh, windows and doors will have different cutouts. It's actually um, not exactly against the frame of the of the cut of the aperture. We don't have those details unless they magically show up. Um, Reciprocating saw is easy enough to do it with. Yep. This might be unrelated, but um, where if, if we want to take out the trash and put it in, in a dumpster, where do we take it? Yeah, it's behind, uh, behind, uh, like by the wood pile there. Well, Jeff takes it, right? So Jeff just put it on the corner of the building. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But if, if we can't find Jeff or if there's like a particularly nasty thing that we just really want to get away. <laughs> 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 That's why I wanted to know. Okay. So behind the wood pile. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Is there um, oh, uh, compost pile. Is there a suggested site for that? No. What was it? For compost? No, I think Right. We gotta solve that. We don't have a compost pile. Or anything, so, um, so I, I do have one thing that I want to bring up, but we got everybody here. Is if you are staying here in the Hab Lab, I've talked to a number of people about this idea, but I would like to set up a kind of a consent framework so that we can build out some ex, some sort of community expectations. And I'm gonna we're gonna pitch the idea. Uh, and so I'd like us all to meet this evening at 8 p.m. ish. But if anybody else has any other ideas and when we meet. We would, we're only going to meet for like 15 minutes when we do these meetings. It's very, it's be very small amount of time so that we don't burn people with BS. So, um, it should probably just just after we're done, right? Just do a 15 minute quick meet because we don't know if we're going to be done at eight or eight fifteen. Well, we seven. can also do the 15 minutes right now as well. If they, if people time. want to sit around, time. 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 just set a time. Done is you know we're we're done, but somebody's over. Somewhere else. Yeah, if you, if you yeah we're not we're not gonna be going past like seven. Okay. Well but we can just do right, it now too right. if people are gonna be sticking around. We we'll just do it now. Well, we're all here, right? Yeah, bang it out. Let's bang it out. Anyone else have four. nobody has any problems with that? Okay. Great. And so then an hour lunch and, it, and well I mean uh, people can eat and do their thing and I'll talk and, and then we'll, we'll we'll do the voting. Can the people who are aren't here get? Um who isn't here though? That that is that is staying. Well I mean Martin, it's not, it doesn't concern you. You don't live here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the old earth thing. Uh, all right, so real quick, the, the idea is, is something that I call a consent framework, and it's basically just establishing some uh, very minimal expectations about what we all agree we should be doing, you know, for like trash or food in the fridge or doing dishes. And uh, what this is meant to do is just establish some expectations so people know how to behave and so that way one person isn't expecting somebody to do the dishes and then they don't and we get into this, this like frisian thing.